Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Midland Community Stadium for the 2017 homecoming game. The Midland Chemics hosting the Davidson Cardinals in a big matchup here in the Saginaw Valley League Red Division. Hi, this is Dave Marsh bringing you tonight's action along with the old ball coach, Frank Aldemore. And uh, you can just feel the, the excitement building in the air, coach. It's kind of a... The weather can't decide what to do, but uh, the fans are raring to go. And uh, for this big matchup, both teams 3-0 and in the league coming in. And uh, uh, I've been looking forward to this one well, for a while. Well, not only are they 3-0, they and but they're also Midland's 4-1, and Davison's 5-0. and uh, Both have good football game, good football teams. They've played good games of the year, except for Midland's opener with Traverse City. And I just don't think Midland was ready to play that night, and Traverse City was. Since that time, Midland has shown vast improvement. Uh, Davison's first game was a 56-54 win <laughs> yeah. over Southfield. Southfield's a pretty good football team. So, you know, both teams can put points on the board. Uh, both teams have, have, their defenses have improved over the, the time. What's important here is tonight, are you a contender or are you a pretender? For the for the playoffs, and this is this is the kind of teams, these two teams are who are going to face each other. I honestly feel that uh, Midland has an excellent chance tonight if they can follow their keys to the game, and that's what's important for them. And I think if we take a look at this, see Midland has to slow the game down. The important thing for Midland is to limit the possessions of Davison. They can't let Davison have possession after possession. So Midland can't have three and out. And not only that, they can't be in a big rush-up offense. They have to slow that game down. They have to limit their turnovers. And this has been a big deal for them uh, since the beginning of the season. They can't fumble. They can't throw interceptions. They can't go fourth down and not make it. And Midland always has had a special team mojo, except this year. And they got to get that special team mojo back. And that is pinning, your, pinning the team on kickoffs into the corner, Good punt game, good extra point, good field goal. Those are the kind of things that Midland has always done well. They haven't this year, but we're looking as, as the season progresses with this young team to get better and better at it. Let's go to Davison, who's an outstanding team. First off, you have to stop Martin Money. And, you know, my thinking is Martin Money is a six foot, 195 pound back. At the end of this game, he should be 5'5 five, five and 150 pounds. He should be worn out by the end of this game. And on the other side, they have to have a big, big game from their star, Tariq Reed. And for them, it's a field position game. Make Midland run the field rather than have a short field. And this is where Midland has been most successful this year. They have gotten short fields. Well, the Midland High Band uh, out onto the field right now and getting ready for the game, playing the Midland High fight song. and. You had mentioned about uh, key for Davison stopping Martin Money. Uh, Money has really come on strong the last two games, rushing for over 200 yards against Mount Pleasant and Bay City Central, three touchdowns each game. And uh, it seemed like kind of when they played Flint before that, it started to kind of go that well, way a little more to well, Money. Look, Dave, and, Money uh, now has his football legs under him. He was playing baseball all summer and being an old baseball player and being an old football player, it takes you a couple weeks to get your football legs under you. Uh, you get used to getting a bump, you get used to bumping off people. Uh, you just can't make that adjustment right away. And he now has made the adjustment and he's ready, he's ready. Well, as the teams line up here pre-game, we're gonna send it down to the field for the national anthem. It'll be performed by the Midland High Meister Singers uh, tonight for our homecoming game. So send it down to the field for the anthem.
talking about uh, Martin Money. Uh, interestingly, uh, Money leading uh, rusher for Midland with 646 yards, eight yards per carry, nine touchdowns. And you mentioned Tariq Reed from Davison. Um, also a phenomenal back. Very similar stats, 605 yards rushing, 8.1 yards per carry, and uh, and eight touchdowns rushing. So uh, obviously both uh, running backs, uh, key components to the respective offenses. Well, you have to understand, Davison hasn't played anybody since Southfield. Midland has played some pretty decent teams, but again, they haven't played anybody since Traverse City West in my mind. I mean, Bay City Western's been uh, probably the poorest Bay City Western. Flint, I have no idea why they even have a football team right now. Uh, you know, and so they, it depends, this is a game right now. These are two football teams that are out to prove themselves. Midland wins, they have a winning season. Midland has to get two more games to qualify for the playoffs. So these are, are big games for them. Davison, undefeated season, fairly highly ranked looking for an opportunity to go on and, and prove themselves as one of the top teams in the state. And they have big game coming up later in the year with Lapeer, their natural rivalry. Dow has a big, or Midland has a big game coming up at the end of the year with Dow. So as we see what's going on here tonight, it's, it's kind of a proving ground. Chemex ranked 10th uh, in the state uh, currently with that four and one record, five and overall. Um, up and down the the charts, similar stats between the two teams. Midland second in the red division of the Second Valley League in total offense, 1644. And uh, Davison, 1526. Very similar defensive stats as well. And um, and the quarterback play, Cade Metner's uh, really come on. He's improved a lot since last year and really come on strong the last couple weeks and uh, has thrown for eight touchdowns, only three interceptions on the year. Well, I'll tell you, a big game was last week against Bay City Central at Bay City Central to win in overtime. And, and Bay City Central reminds me of Tennessee. They could, Every game they play is going to come down to the last play of the game, mm -hmm. you know. And so you, you kind of look at that and say, okay, how good is Bay City Central? They beat Dow in overtime, they lost to Midland in overtime. So, you know, we're looking at possibly Midland, Dow, Bay City Central, all in districts with uh, maybe Fenton or somebody in that area as uh, as potential fourth team. And uh, doing the quarterback play for Davison is Cannon Hall, number 14, thrown for 435 yards, eight TDs and uh, two interceptions. Uh, himself, so again, similar stats between the two quarterbacks. And so the teams uh, line up, Midland will kick off to start the game. And uh, looking at warm ups, uh, Davidson looks like they have some pretty good size out there. Well, Midland's going to definitely be at a size disadvantage and an experience disadvantage. Midland's entire front line is juniors, yeah. Davidson's front line are seniors. So that offensive and defensive line, that's important. Pooch kick for the Chemex sails out of bounds. Not quite what they're looking for. Midland has uh, over the years employed that uh, kind of pooch kick towards the sideline, um, but this time uh, sails out of bounds and uh, be pretty good field position for Davison starting things off. See, that's exactly that special team mojo we've been talking yeah. about. That pooch kick just has not made it this year yeah it's either gone out of bounds or it's gone too far or too short and so davison will take over to start things off on their first possession at their own 35 yard line i want to watch out for number one austin Rowland. he's a split receiver on near side <laughs> Quarterback checks with coach on the signals as Hall. Taking plenty of time here to get this play called in. Still checking. And they may have to call a timeout on the very first play. There was just okay. a lot of confusion. Well, first, first off, I've never understood this. You know, and I, you know, this is 40 years of coaching and another dozen years of watching games 
you have a script at the Don't beginning of the game. <laughs> you know what you're going to run. You're not going to change it. The reason is you want to see what the other team is doing. You're not trying to score. You need to win in the fourth quarter. You don't need to win on the first play. <laughs> so no matter what's going on, we have a script. We have a 10, 12, 20, 20 play script. There was a chance and, it would be handed off to Reed anyway. So, yeah, yeah, right. You're, you're going to hand it off to Reed or throw it to Roland. I mean, what, what, how big of a script do you need <laughs> for that? All you're trying to do is see what they're doing. I don't understand. Uh, maybe it's showing my age. I don't <laughs> yeah, understand this right. at all. I think you are, yeah. But, but, but that coach over on the sideline, he's got the worst position on the whole field to see what's going on. So we're going to try again. First play of the game. And in motion, handoff goes to Reed. He's got a hole of Jets left. Uh, nicely done by uh, Midland High. Uh, Christian Gordon came up from his safety position to make the tackle after about a three yard pickup for Reed. See, Dow's philosophy, or Midland's philosophy tonight has to be stop Reed. Key on Reed. Do not let Reed beat you. It's okay if the other guys beat you, but Reed cannot beat you. Midland's front four defensively, number nine, Matt Ware, number 34, Vaughn Walker, 64, Cam White, and 36, Ben Gordon. Be trying to stuff the run. Really kind of occupy blockers for the linebackers to pick him up. Quick handoff to Reed again. Missed a tackle, flag on the play. Good job defensively by the Chemex again. And that time it was Ryan Coldston uh, from his linebacker position. It's going to be a hold on Davison. It was Colston number 12 on the tackle. Number 31, Jesse Hayes, also at linebacker. And 24, Ryan Sisicki. Going to decide. I'm probably going to take the penalty here, I well, think. 10 yeah. yard penalty. Well, first off, I really like the way Midland is running yeah. the football. Even in the first two plays, you know, they, they have. Good enthusiasm going to the football. So it'll we'll replay second down here, back to the 27 yard line. Bring up a second and 18. The rest of the starters for Midland Gordon, number one, Mitchell Reed at safety, Zach Servinsky at cornerback, and Jacob Gamola, number 25, at the other corner. Oh, I don't like the looks of this for Midland because got man coverage they've, got, they've wide. got man coverage and nobody deep. Number and one can run by everybody. And number six, Anthony Fordham's a pretty good size receiver over there as well. And this time, Davison jumps. Very sloppy start to, oh, it's a timeout, Midland. Midland High calls, boy, a choppy start to this, this game. Uh, two penalties and two timeouts in the first four plays. But uh, Menard didn't like what he saw. Maybe he, maybe they saw what you saw and what said, I saw hey, was, we, we need to change this What I saw alignment. was you got second and 27, and you've got, you're going to throw the ball to number one. With no safety With back no there. With no safety back there to help out. Today's football demands that you either have one or two high safeties. And the reason is you want to give a little bit of help to that interior position. You can't give any help to the guy outside unless you're in too high. Uh, if you have one safety, then he, his job is, okay, you can catch the ball in front of me, but you can't catch the ball over me, and you can't catch the ball between the hashes. That's his job. And if you want to play run defense, that's fine. But second and 27, yeah. they can have up to 27 yards. Yeah, that was probably a pretty you know? good time out there to uh, to reevaluate the situation. Yeah, so. Uh, well, now they. Now there's four receivers for Gordon's back a little bit at safety. Ball's back to pass and he's brought down. Great job by the Kemick defense. It was Jesse Hayes with number 31 with the sack. And Davison uh, moves back even farther. Okay, watch Jesse Hayes come off the corner and you can see it come right inside. Here's the inside move and you have a pretty good play right there. Beat uh, the tight end immediately off the block. Good first step by uh, Hayes to get the sack. It brings up third and 22. Re 
Reed in the backfield. Rollins split wide left. Hall is taking off himself. He breaks a tackle, he's off to the races. He has midfield and he could go. Wow, third and 22, <laughs> quarterback keep. They almost were conceding the play and Hall uh, breaks some tackles and shows pretty good speed down the right Not side. Not only did he show great speed, but he also showed great presence of, of coming through. You can see the mark right here to the outside. And as we get through this, he's gonna come back and he's just gonna run right down the line. There's his move, there's the blocker. He gets into the mess. He's gonna run around the mess on the outside, a missed tackle. And now this is where you talk about a free safety. That's why you have a free safety. His job is to stop that play right there. So the extra point by Mickey Clifford is good. And after a, just a tremendous start to that defensive series, and really they stuffed the run. Uh, the, the defensive line did a nice job uh, breaking that down, but the good See, there, awareness there's by the nothing, quarterback. There's, there, that, that's a, uh, number 23 is coming across the field to make the play, and he, he just can't get there. We would like to welcome the Women High class of 1962 to celebrate their 55th class reunion. Welcome home, class of 62. That's right. Okay, we're gonna take a look at it again, and you're gonna see the quarterback's gonna come up into the mess. He's in the mess. He sees that it's a mess, he gets out of the mess. And now he's going to break to the outside, and there is nobody. He's made his move. 23 is in far corner, takes a dive at him. And, and really, I think everybody's surprised at the speed of the quarterback. Yeah, I was surprised, too. Yeah. Flag on the play It's going to be... Flag on the play. Uh, Davison was off sides on the kickoff. They tried the same pooch kick. Exactly. But uh, the whistle blew the play dead, and they'll have to back up five yards it was a perfect kick pooch kick if you noticed the ball bounced and came bounced back, back. Yeah, yeah like my wedges <laughs> yeah so they'll back it up to the 35 It'll be mickey clifford doing the kickoff duties boy that uh that long run just took some air right out of the stadium didn't it i mean uh what was the a defense had just been what playing was a so perfect well. start for Midland ended up being a touchdown yeah. for Davison. But again, Dave, as I as I said to you, in this football world today, you need safeties. And you need to be able to make safeties, make uh, open field tackles. Grove with the return. And he's gonna get about to the twenty nine, maybe the thirty yard line. The uh that offsides uh, cost Davison more than the yardage. They Midland then kind of knew it was coming, so they uh, Grove and Money were playing playing up on that kickoff instead of deep. And so they'll have decent field position See, for the Chemex. To me tonight, Carter Grove is a big player because he's the he's he is their receiver. Money the runner, Grove the receiver, and depending on how they hook up, is is going to be crucial tonight in the success of this game. Yeah, Grove, uh, you think about the M&M &M boys, Metner and Money, but Grove having a tremendous season so far himself with 18 catches and three touchdowns. Quick pass to Money, makes a move, got the first down, and uh, run out of bounds. And a uh, little uh, surprise play there. They had Money split out wide to the right and just ran a quick route to him and pick up about 15 yards and move the chains. That was a well-thrown pass and a well-executed run by Martin Money. Money's a combo of shiftiness, power, and speed. It seems like he just he just has a knack. Yes, he does. Cade Metner, senior quarterback, hands to Money, drives ahead for about three. Uh, front line for the Chemics, starting at center, number 51, James Harris, 
Left guard, 67, Gage Allen is. Right guard, number 55, Joe Cullinane. Left tackle, number 54, Ethan Volmering. And at right tackle, 64, Cameron White. And uh, Reed Mitchell, number one, also dangerous receiver, is one of the ends. Metner back to pass. He has time, fires, got his man. That's, cut, that's Grove. And another first down for the Chemex. Grove just kind of did a little curl, settled in, and uh, Metner threw a bullet. Oh, excuse me, that was Caden Jacobs, not uh, not Grove. Grove is number 14. Caden Jacobs on that reception for the Chemex. The sixth catch of the season. First and 10, Midland, they're in Davison territory at the 44. Pitch right to Money, good block on the edge. Money drives ahead, picks up two or three yards. See, the thing I like most about Money is when he falls, he falls forward yeah. three yards. I mean, he gets hit, and then he falls he forward three so yards. <laughs> I always thought that was a great thing about Emmett Smith. He always gained a yard or two extra because he would fall forward. And uh, you're right at Money. He just has enough drive that he ends up uh, getting an extra yard or two. This time, Metner is going to keep it. Didn't fool anybody. Going to lose a yard. Now, this is a big play right here. It's third and nine. Ball's inside the 50-yard line. And this is what we're talking about. Move the chains. Keep the game going. Limit the possession. You saw what happened to Davison. One play, they scored. Yeah. You've got to keep the ball out of their hands. Ben Worley in at tight end on the left side. Reed in the slot. And they're back to pass. Steps up in the pocket, fires, the ball's tipped. Tried to find Grove, but uh, the ball was tipped, falls incomplete, and it's decision time for the Chemex. Fourth and nine from the yeah. 44. Looks like they're gonna punt it away. Well, there's no decision. Again, uh, this is a field position game. Keep, the, keep them make, have a long field. Let your defense do its thing. But don't kick it the number one. Kick it out of bounds. Martin Money, the punter as well for Midland. Austin Rowland is a dangerous return man. Good snap. It's a fake. Money throwing deep, and it is caught. What a catch. What a catch by Kane and Jacobs. Midland with the fake. Money rolled a little right. Jacob slipped off the line. Left, he was open. A little overthrown, but what a grab. Fantastic. Here's Jacobs out on the corner. He's gonna come down right there, settle in. Oh, he came, he across, came across the line. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. He went through the wash. Yeah, that's really slick. I love that. Yeah, and they he went right to sell everybody right, and then uh, Jacobs goes left. First down, Chemex. Money, the ball carrier. Oh, the flag on the play. Midland jumped. So the false start will put him back five yards and bring up first and 15. That play looked like it had uh, some big play potential. They try to get Money out into some open space where he can either uh, run by you or run through you. Cade Metner, the son of Midland High head coach, Eric Metner. Eric was an outstanding quarterback in, at Coleman back in the day. Metner back to pass again. He's got time. Fires downfield to Money. Just overthrown. Just a little too deep. Offensive line so far, uh, Doing a nice job. I really like the play of number 54, Eric Volmering. I tell you, he, he has held his own out there against a pretty good football player. Aaron He's Gil our left tackle. Yeah, number nine, Aaron Gilmore on the right side is a uh, uh, big fella. That's a cast on his arm. Second and 15, Gabe Metner. Getting the play in from his dad. 
Grove in the right slot. Fake hand up to Money. Money stays in the block. Fires downfield to Metner looking for Grove. Just overthrown. Good effort by Carter Grove, but uh, just a little too much on that throw. It'll bring up a third and 15. Boy, you sure like to, to uh, capitalize on a successful fake punt. Kind of use that one up Absolutely. early. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dave, it, we're going to take a look at this, and really you need to get in a position that if you're going to go on fourth down, then you got to get at least half, half of, of this yeah. right now. Yeah. Which is, we would have liked to do something like that earlier. We went two bombs, and they were both open. They just didn't complete it. Oh, Misses boy. the snap. Mender picks it up on the bounce. Fires downfield. Intercepted. Oh, ill-advised throw. There's a flag on the play. It might be after the interception. interception. Mettner tried to make something out of nothing and uh, just wasn't there. I don't think he saw the guy underneath on the coverage. Okay, we're gonna see the, the poor snap. And as we come it's around the corner downfield on Midland will be declined. And Davis will take over. And terrific field position right yep. now for Davison. So Davison will take over on their own 40 yard line. Promising drive, stalls. They don't have threw the ball a lot on that drive, but they were end up being in uh, long yardage situations. Or much of it. Number 42, Sam Hine in the lineup on the defensive line for Midland now. So Hall, the lefty is back at quarterback. Back to pass goes Hall. He's looking downfield deep and it's caught. Flag on the play. I the think guy it's gonna, was dangerous. I think it's going to be oh, offensive yeah, interference. I think there was a push off. I think he pushed off. So Austin Rowland, you're saying he's dangerous. It is going to be offensive. Okay, so I think that's a good. He's going to come down here in this in this oh, lane right here, and he's going to be open, but he's going to push off to get to the ball. So a big break for the Chemics, but then again, You'll see the, it right the, here, he comes down around the corner. He's that, uh, he's running a wheel pattern, and right, oh, we missed it. Yeah. But he pushed off. Enough, that created get, the separation. Get, got the separation. <laughs> so another but big play by Davis, and this we time can it's nullified. We see the explosiveness. Correction. And this is where you talk about, I, I need help back there. You know what I mean? I need, <laughs> if I'm a defensive yeah. back, I'm saying, hey, I, I could use a little help back here. <laughs> that guy is better than I am. Yeah, they they have some. Uh, Servinsky, there. Servinsky is a good defensive back, but no matter how good a defensive back you are, when a guy runs a wheel pattern, and you may have to grab him to stop him. Bigger and He's faster. just too good. So, first and 25, Reed goes off the right side. And uh, again, from the safety position, I believe, yes, it's a. Uh, that's uh, Christian Gordon on the tackle. He kind of slipped through there, but Gordon, uh, that was a big play, because if uh, he misses that tackle, Reed may still be running. So second and 20, he did pick up five yards on the play. Ball on the 30-yard line, 5.20 to go here in the first quarter. Davison leading 7 nothing after the big run by the quarterback, Cannon Hall. Two setbacks. Now in the backfield, Reed takes the handoff, cuts back again, and good pursuit once again by the Chemex. Ryan Colson in on the tackle. Midland's run defense has been excellent. Actually, their run defense on the touchdown was, was. excellent. They stuffed the it. guy broke it to the outside, and then he was in open territory. So third and 19, <clears throat> this is the situation 
where they got burned before. It was third and 22 from nearly the same spot on the field. This is all number one. This is all going to Roland. Call back to pass. He is looking for Roland. He's going deep. And it is. That was, was a pretty, pretty well thrown ball. Like well thrown ball, good pattern, excellent coverage. It just yep. too much ball. Give uh, credit to Servinsky on that good coverage. Thought Roland may have almost given up on it a little bit. Hall's he, got a pretty good, he got pretty tied nice arm. About, about the 50, he got tied up feet wise with Servinsky. Servinsky recovered, uh, Roland did Roland not. Roland didn't, yeah. And so. Davison back to punt. Clifford also doing the punting duty, duties. Martin Money back to receive. Good pressure, nice punt. Money with a fair catch at the 33. Nice excellent, punt by Clifford. Excellent punt. So the big offensive pass interference penalty keeps it a seven nothing game for the Cardinals. Well, you can see the explosiveness of Davison and, and, and why I said earlier in the game, you have to slow the game down and move the chains. You can't get greedy. The bombs are not there. You have to run the chains. And Hall doesn't look like he'd have much speed. He's kind of a big guy. It's like a pocket type quarterback, but he showed good speed on that touchdown. Pitch left to Money. Trying to find the edge. Good pursuit by uh, by Davison. And uh, it's only gonna be about a two yard gain. They've been able to contain money thus far just as the Chemex have contained Reed. Second and eight. Just under four minutes to go in the first quarter. Big crowd here on the home side for this homecoming contest at Midland Community Stadium. Metner rolling to the right, fires downfield, dangerous pass. Tried to find Reed, but uh, he was well covered. And uh, bring up third and long. Really going to the passing game a lot. We're getting a little impatient with the running game or uh, I don't I don't know. The third and eight. I'm not I'm not so sure I want to challenge these DBs. I want to challenge those linebackers. I don't have to wear those guys down a little bit. Matt Nebrek to pass again. Steps up, he's under heavy pressure, and he goes down. Every receiver got picked up, bumped along the way. Every single receiver got picked up. And uh, it was good coverage, really. If you take a look, watch, a little watch the receivers as they come in here, and they, you'll see them getting bumped off all the way across. 12 yards to go. Ball is at the 31-yard line. That's See, there's the bump. There's a bump. There's a pickup all the way. Now there's nobody open, and here comes... And that was really a very good job of blocking by 85. It's just that he had no chance. Money punting. He was definitely yeah. avoiding. Got a great roll. Holy yeah. moly. We're not kicking He was avoiding, one. avoiding rolling. Exactly. Very effective punt by Money. Exactly. And no return. That's, that's what we want. Got a fortuitous bounce. Picked up an extra about 15 yards. The ball hugged the uh, sideline. That was not a good series. Not a good series. Started off with a pitch that Midland has been famous for 75 years. Yep. But right now, it's just not executing. I had a nice talk with Gary Joswack about the pitch uh, a couple of weeks ago. He's a believer. He well, he should be. <laughs> and I'm a believer. Won him a lot of games. And I'm a yes. believer. I just think modern football has changed a little bit and the pitch has to change with it. The pitch is still there, it's a great play. It's a five yard, five yard, five yard yeah. touchdown play. So Davison takes over on their own 29 yard line. Reed with a carry, again, nice job up front by the Kemmicks. 
Walker in on the stop. Vaughn Walker along with uh, Colston. And uh, it'll bring up, by gain about a yard, so it'll bring up a second and nine for Davison. They've been trying to run him up to the right side a lot. But so far, Midland, uh, Midland has read the same game plan you did. We gotta, we gotta shut him down. Shut him Number down. One priority. Here's Roland split wide to the left. Servinsky man coverage. Hall's gonna keep it. Cut back again, still on his feet, and churns ahead for the first, first down. down. That was just a nifty run. He just kind of picked his kinda, way and turns on his side, and he's uh, quick. He's quicker than he looks. He kind of changed directions pretty quickly there. You can watch it again. Good, Good seal block just, there, and he just found some open green and uh, and just uh, fell forward. First and ten from the forty. A minute and a half to go in the first quarter. Hall going to keep it again, same play. This time better job by the Kemet defense. Going to hold him to about a one yard gain. Walker in on the stop again. Hall reminds me a lot of the quarterback last year from Fenton. Yeah. Where you know, he, had that, he had the same body type and same running ability, same passing ability. Second and nine. Max Slezak, number 10, is tight end, going to be in the slot. That uh, Roland is always out wide left, just lurking. You kind of have to account for him. As you can tell, they're going to try to go big with him every so often. Davison with the two-toned helmets. Reed kicks it off to the right. He's breaking free. He's got the first down and more. Cuts back to the middle, cuts back way to the left, being pursued and finally run out of bounds by Servinsky. Huge gain by Reed. That's the danger we were talking about. He once he got into the open field. Okay, now we got to take a little look. He's going to come up in here, do his thing in here, and then we're going to see a great cutback. There's the move. Hesitation. Le'Veon Bell hesitation. <laughs> yep. And now watch this little cu jump jump cut right there. And now he's off to the races. He's picked up some white shirts. And boy, I'll tell you, that was a great no block yeah. by number one. Instead of getting him in the back. Right. It's a 56-yard pickup for Reed. Said they've been containing him, but not on that play. You cannot contain speed. 26 seconds to go in the quarter. Davison knocking on the door. Reed again, off to the right side again. Great pursuit by the Chemex. There's uh, Colston on the stop. Now Midland must hold for a field goal. They, if they get a field goal here, if Davison gets a field goal, it's gonna be a win for Midland. They cannot let Davison score. So the clock winds down on the first quarter with Davison on top, 7 nothing, and they are knocking on the door. You know, Dave, that first quarter, we look at it, and really there have been just a couple plays that Davison's been successful yeah. on. The run by the quarterback and then this last run by Reed. Other than that, the middle plays. defense has held yeah. Davison in check. Well, folks, you're watching this Midland High versus Davison homecoming football game on MCTV Charter Communications, cable channel 189 in Midland. You can also find MCTV under channel 99 on AT&T's U-verse. This game will be cable cast on the following dates and times. You can see on your screen this Saturday and Sunday at 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And then uh, next, uh, and then, in subsequent days, it will be replayed as well. More dates and times for those uh, broadcasts will, will follow next week on MPS TV 190. You can check the Midland Public Schools website at www.midlandps.org for the schedule. 
You can also view this program online at the Midland Public Schools YouTube channel. So second and 12 as we start the second quarter. Yeah, big time for the, the Chemex. Uh, you can tell Davison has very strong defense. You certainly don't want to fall uh, far behind. Not that it would be insurmountable early in the game, but you can hold them to three, it would definitely be a win. Power backfield, Hall wide open in the flat, and that's gonna go in for the score. Excellent play call, well-designed play. Well, and gonna, he found Gabe Ellis you're gonna uh, see by himself. You're gonna see that Davison here is in the triangle, back in here, and the back's gonna come out of the backfield. Here comes a little fake, and so we're gonna have a wide open back in the, in the flat. So, gonna go for the extra point try here is uh, Clifford. There's the back in the flat. Just slipped out and was and uncounted for. And a terrific for. block by 16. Blocked! Great job by uh, Servinsky, rushing the edge on that extra point. Flying in, uh, excellent special teams play by Servinsky. And so uh, Davison goes up 13-0 here on the first play of the second quarter. The, uh, we'll see if... Uh, it comes off the corner. Sorry, off the corner there on the outside. Great block. That was well executed by Servinsky. Just uh, dove for where the point of the ball where it was gonna be. If he didn't get it, he wasn't going to rough the kicker. And so, got to see if the middle offense can do something here. They uh, punted their last two times and had a decent drive to this start, is, but this, it stalled. This, this is an old try, what is called the diamond. And uh, and this is a favorite play out of the diamond. You fake the running play one way and you bring the back out the other. This is a play we used to call back the linebackers ago, all go with the fake. Actually, and you go with the up. tailback and you slip a guy out and you run a bootleg. Pooch kick. Feel it by Reed. Got room to run, still on his feet. And he's going to dive just beyond the 40 yard line. So nice job by Mitchell Reed. Ran a long way sideways, but uh, caught the ball on the sideline and was able to put Midland in good field position. Kind of surprised that Davison uh, goes with that pooch kick. Clifford seems like a pretty good kicker. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't understand that myself, but maybe they're afraid of run backs or maybe yeah. they're, maybe they just don't care. Maybe they, <laughs> maybe you know, we maybe we just, you anyway. we're going to stop you anyway and you, wherever you get, you get. Some teams are like that. They'll hit low line drives and just not risk. They, they don't want the long run. First and 10 Kamek from the 41. And up to money. He spins, but then he's stuffed. Try to get that, uh, he's pretty good on that spin move. Uh, got hit after a yard gain, but uh, right now, brought the, down. The two defenses are playing better, two de defensive lines are playing better than the two offensive lines. In both cases, low man wins. In both cases, the defenses are lower than the offenses. This time, money split wide to the left. He was on the first play of the game. Big handoff. It's Metner with the keep, and he was met. Driven back. Gave Ellis on the stop. And uh, well, right when that play started, it looked like it had some potential, but the linebacker just filled the gap. And uh, there's nowhere to run for Metner. Well, when Bunny's not in the backfield, who's left to run the ball? Mentor. That's all. And so that's what you key on. Third and eight for the Chemex. Desperately want to Again, move the chains. Again, situation is money out here, isolated, one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Mentor back to pass, looking deep for money, and uh, really well yeah, covered. Like out there by number 18. Uh, we try to throw it up where Money can make a play. Okay, on this it, is a play by well Money. Covered. But I want you to watch the coverage here. 
one on one as money goes out. This is nothing other than a fly pattern. But watch the coverage. The, the defensive back stays inside money. And watch, he's going to face guard money. But face guarding is legal this year. So that was a good play, good defense. Yeah, that was good defense. Money for his third punt of the game. Booming kick, tries to keep it away from Roland again, and again gets a nice roll. Yeah, he does. Down to the 19. He's the kind of guy that thinks just work out for. <laughs> the ball could easily have sailed out of bounds exactly. and said it. He gains right another 10 yards with a roll. Money, we mentioned a tremendous athlete, an excellent baseball player and basketball player for the Chemics as well. Money, Money can beat his defender on any pattern other than a fly pattern. He can, the defender can run with money on the fly pattern. Money can beat that defender on any other pattern. So if money runs a post pattern, if money runs some sort of a Z pattern, money can beat that guy. Money will beat him for the ball because money is, is, is really a true athlete. But when you run a fly pattern, the other guy, the other guy is just as fast and probably a little taller and is a pretty good defensive back in that range. Well, this is a big series for the Midland defense, don't you think, Coach? Absolutely. Down by two touchdowns. Absolutely. You just don't want the hole to get any deeper. And there's a flag on the play. I think it's a delay game. Back judge threw the flag, and it is delay game. I'll bring up a first and 15 for the Cardinals. Cardinals coached by Kyle Zimmerman. And uh, Zimmerman's uh, done a great job over at Davison, 23 and 11. He's in his fourth season. Uh, been very strong program the last few years. Davison for a lot of years was a true power. Then they went down for a couple years and he took over. They had a bad uh, first year, and, but since that point he's been pretty good. It's a sweep to Fordham, but a great pursuit by Midland. Uh, or, uh, excuse me, Gamola runs him out of bounds. Okay, this is, this is a jet sweep where you're going to come around the corner and it's going to be pure speed on the part of Roland. But Midland's running to the ball very well. They just uh, strung it out so he couldn't get the edge. The he most just ran out of real estate. The most important thing about that play is the block of your wideouts. In this case here, that block was called a lookout block. <laughs> you just tell the runner, look out, I can't block anybody. Second and 14 for Davison. And off to Reed, cuts back, but uh, good job again by the Chemic defense. Was, uh, Number 12, Colson again. Colson playing a nice Midland, game so far. When we take a look at this in the next series, you're going to see 11 ball players for Midland within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Now, that's a great defense until they break one. Yeah. After they break one, there's nobody there. Now, this is this is pretty good. Now, you see that defensively, there's a one high safety back there. Gordon in the deep safety on third and 11. Reed tries to go wide, breaks a tackle, but uh, no, again, great pursuit by the Chemics. Just strung it out, and uh, that was an outstanding play. Matt Weir. Matt Weir. Matt Weir no, Sam Hine, isn't it? Number 42? Uh, yeah, Sam Hine. Sam that Hine. was an outstanding play by Sam Hine. Strung he's it out. He's been playing pretty tackle. well this year. So great job by the Chemic defense uh, holding. Davis into a three and out, aided by the delay game penalty, but they ought to punt it away. Midland should get a good field position here. Money just beyond the midfield stripe to receive the punt. Line, drive, kick, watch out, don't let it hit. Money picks it up on the hop, and he's going to get about seven yards. I think he may have feared that it hit his own man. Um, but you've talked over the years a lot about uh, hidden yardage. 
you know, where it's not really statistical, but money lets that go. That's, That's about go. a 15, 20-yard exactly. difference. Exactly, and he plus five, so it's a 20, 25-yard yeah. advantage right there. Money's a smart player. Every money's been a smart player. Yeah, that's Every true. money. Back in the the eighties and nineties, the, Go back to the, the money boys. Yep. The monies of the eighties and nineties were something. Started with Greg. Greg Money. Who was the oldest. oldest. Brad Money. Steve. And uh, Martin's dad, Brian Money, also a great player. Swing pass. Oh, oh, Reed, what a play by the Davison defender. He was blocked on the play and uh, he just tackled, blew it up. He tackled both the blocker and the receiver. This is a terrific play by 17. He's going to come up. You're going to see that right there. Watch this play. Right through there. Look at that. That's yeah. a fantastic yeah, play. Yeah, that's, that's and, just And it's that's really not right a bad effort by the by the by wide out. Yeah. The names are tricky to say because the roster we have doesn't really, <laughs> a lot of numbers don't match or aren't on the roster. There's no 17 for us. Metner on the right side. He's got a hole up the middle. Got the first down, runs over number 17 that time. <laughs> All the way down to the 30 yard line. Good effort by Cade Metner. Um, See, they're geared on stopping money, and they all go to money, and Metner makes a great play, and we see an outstanding block Gage by Ellen the is, right tackle. Gage Allen is 67 with a seal block uh, opening the way, and then you can see uh, Metner just buries number 17 for some extra yardage. First and 10, Chemex at the 30. Metner again keeps it, and he's going to squirt ahead for about three. Gabe Ellis, number 24 on the tackle, bring up a second and seven situation. Now, what I like about that is now you've got to worry about Metner, and that allows Money to get free. If Money gets in that secondary, Money's going to score. Yeah. They've done a good job containing him so far. Three wide outs to the right. Quick pitch to Money on the left side. And uh, really not a lot of room to run there. He'll get to the 25. And uh, bring up a third and five for the Chemex. Clock is moving six and a half to go in the second quarter. Josh Campbell, number 16, split to the left. Grove in the slot. And Mitchell Reed split out wide right. Money's the up back. He's going to take it on the sweep. No, Metner's going to keep it. Another big hole up the middle. Still on his feet. Metner breaks wide. He dives for the pylon, and he's in and for the what touchdown. What an effort what by K. Metner. Run. Just what the doctor ordered. Now, here comes the fake here to Money. And now he's going to take that ball and come up in here and make a great little action. Here's the run. Now, watch the run. He's looking at it. This is an option. Pursuit went to the right. Pursuit he chased went to the left. He broke a tackle. And now he's running for the end. And then a tremendous. Oh, he's down. <laughs> Good thing there's no yeah. replay on that. Yeah, he's down on the one, but great. The extra point is up and good. Nice job by Metner on the Monster hold there. Play. Here we look at it again. Oops. We're gonna look at it again. Here comes the fake. Now he's reading this tackle. Watch him read this tackle out on the corner. He's gonna read right here. And then that went outside and he made the play. Another good block by Allen is. Just enough play. Terrific play. Might have been down a little shy, but uh, tough call for the official. He was getting run over by a couple of guys. Um, but none, nevertheless, Chemex on the board. So they got the big defensive stop here, the three out. Get good field position on a good special teams play and a good offensive drive for the score. So Metner with his fourth rushing touchdown on the season. 
He's got a 157 yard rushing coming into the game. Thomas Schwartz, the place kicker. He kicked the extra point. I end over end. The ball's loose. And uh, good job by Reed to, uh, to catch that. If uh, might have been headed out of bounds. Gamola, Jacob Gamola in hot pursuit. If Reed doesn't get it, Midland could potentially recover. So Davison will take over at their own 18 yard line. Very effective kick. Uh, by Schwartz. So that adds a little uh, electricity to the big crowd here at Midland Community Stadium for this homecoming contest. And uh, there's a lot of time left in this in this half, and it's very important here to get it three and out, to get the ball back in good field position so you can do something. Just under six minutes. The rain is starting to fall here at the stadium, big dark cloud overhead. Reed, oh man, nice job by the Kemick defense. Swallowing that up. Cam White just plugged the hole. Other than the one run by Reed, he really has not been as explosive as we would have thought. You can see right here, we're gonna see a, a terrific fill coming in on here. And here comes, here comes the fill right here Number 12 jammed it up, 64 jumps in, yeah. did a great job. Actually, Ryan Sasicki, yeah. that was a tremendous play. He yes, was it was. sealed off and he uh, just fought through the block, forced him into, uh, into white. Second and nine. Hall to pass, and he's got it rolling. He's dangerous, still on his feet. Finally hauled down, but they're gonna move the chains. They just try to get him out in space, and they were successful on that one. Yeah, you're right. You, he, get, he touches the ball, and you hold your breath. That's right. Actually, I thought that was a pretty good job by the Midland defense tackling in space. Hall with a bullet out there. Left-handed uh, thrower. And uh, I mentioned Roland is listed as number 99 in, on the on the roster. Basically the opposite number, uh, number one. About 440 to go here in the second quarter. Midland getting this momentum, just like nothing better to get a stop here and uh, have momentum going back in. Going deep to Roland and it is broken up. That is great coverage by Servinsky. That's just a tremendous play. They, we went deep for Roland and uh, good strong so arm Minsky's by out here. He's, he's gonna make this play. Roland's running nothing but a fly pattern, but Servinsky does an outstanding job of running with him. Now that's, see that's inside position. Look for the ball, go up. And strip it. And pull the guy's arm and down. He almost Terrific. caught, and he almost picked it off. Yeah. Terrific job by Servinsky. Zach Servinsky, number 23. Second 10, Hall is going to keep it. He's out in the open again, and there he goes. Oh, my goodness. He's got some wheels. He breaks it again. This time, a 67 yard run. He's got two of those long touchdown runs, just backbreakers for the Comics. Their defense playing so well. and Okay, now we take again. Place. We make, run the fake here, come off this corner, get to the perimeter, and once you get to the perimeter, he uses those wheels to run. He's, he's got good There's speed. There's the fake. Now he comes up, missed tackle, good block, great block out on the perimeter, knocked down by Roland. Roland got to Servinsky, and that was the end of the game right there. So just like that, the, uh, remember what I said. Uncle Mo shifts we needed again. a three and out there, and not a score. So Davis is going to go for Davidson's two. They missed. Go for two. Zerfinski blocked the last extra watch, point. Watch the same play. It's going to be Reed. They have him. Yeah, nice job. Um, good uh, persistence there by Christian Gordon to throw him down, and it's uh, 19 to seven. That's not your best extra point play right there. No. I mean, Reed, 
do a counter to a target. Uh, yeah, do I mean, a counter to and have Hall well, even the little pass like, that they ran before. Yeah, it was, I really expected just let pass because yeah. it, it was there again. So, uh, boy, we talked about the running ability of Tarek Reed, but uh, we didn't talk much about Cannon Hall. Coach Metner this week did uh, did say that he's a uh, capable uh, passer, but also a very good runner. And uh, Cannon Hall with 289 yards rushing coming in uh, and six touchdowns has eight now. He was averaging 7.8 yards, yards per carry, Coach. Pretty, uh, that's a pretty big number. Right, he's got a lot more than that tonight. Yeah. So, see if the Chemic offense can do something with that. This time, Davidson kicks it deep. Grove at the seven. Got a hole. Works his way out to the 30-yard line. Nice return nice by return. Very Grove. Very good return. And then takes over for... 04 to go here in the second half. <clears throat> and the rain coming down and far side, the homecoming court getting position. Kind of a bummer, all the guys and the girls all dressed up so nice and <laughs> gonna get a little wet. First and 10 Chemex, hand off to Money. Trying to do something, he's got a hole. Up the middle, goes there, goes Martin Money, still on his feet, finally tripped up. There's the explosion we're talking about. Showed some shiftiness to find the hole. Explodes through the hole. Up. He's gonna make a nice little run in here, and then he's gonna show his stuff to the outside. There's the run, I got behind the tackle. Great job by the tackle kicking out. And now Money runs right through everybody. And this is gonna be a diving right at the ankle tackle or else he, he's gonna go a long way. That play, uh, nothing doing. It was kind of that read option and uh, <clears throat> I think Metner saw it wasn't looking good either way. Handed off real late, uh, but it's gonna be about a three yard loss for Money. Money has a way of finding green in front of him. Like he's on that previous run, this that play, no nowhere to go. Well, I like money north and south. I don't like money east and west. Second and thirteen. Metner back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. He's going deep for Grove. He's got him. Grove down and in, down into the end zone. Touchdown, Chemex. Boy, there's <coughs> what an, an answer. answer. Right there. What an answer, Metner. Throws a strike to Carter Grove. Grove's fourth TD of the season. Terrific pass. Grove gets caught right underneath. You'll see it go underneath. And now there it is. Safety falls down. He made sure he caught and it. And catches uh, the football. Wasn't going to be denied. Number 18. Uh, Hit him about three, three yard line and Grove dragged him over the goal line for the score. Schwartz the extra point. <coughs> Metner the holder, kick is up and good. And just like that, the Chemex cut the lead to five, 19 to 14. You gotta like the that response. Was a monster, coach. monster play. Okay, now watch Grove, he's gonna come up in the corner, make a great run. You see him come off the, off the block right there. A little bit of a pick. Safety does fall down. Got behind four guys right there. Right. Coach, we got ourselves a ball we game. We have a terrific ball game. And what, we, what we're having is, surprisingly, no rush on the quarterback. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's, he's got time to he, step up back, in the pocket. able to step up and throw the ball long. And he doesn't, uh, he looks poised back there. You know, he doesn't get happy feet and he just steps up into uh, into the pocket and finds his man. I think we have one occasion where Methner got tackled and for a loss. Yeah. But other than that, I've really been impressed with the blocking of the offensive yeah. line. Well, they're, even that, they're doing a great job. Well, even that time, it was more of a coverage situation where uh, all the receivers were well covered and uh, just had nowhere to throw it. 
So 19-14, three minutes to go in the half. Schwartz kicks it deep and uh, out of bounds. Oh man. That's too bad. That was, that was really a good kick. I would say that's the biggest penalty in football. Kick the ball out of bounds. Get the ball at the 35 for without doing anything. That and a run back and you block in the back. Yeah. So you get the penalty yeah, it's and it goes back from the spot and goes back. So what starts off as a possibly a pretty good field position yeah. ends up being those are the two penalties in high school that I see yep. as being uh, disasters. And both can be avoided. Yes. Both could be avoided. Yep. So we'll see what happens now. Chemic offense coming through here. And uh, the uh, see if the defense can make a stop here in the last three minutes. <coughs> Davison has not really driven the ball. Everything has been a big play. Reed spins. Walker with a good stop there. Going to get three, maybe four on the carry. And... Uh, Vaughn Walker mentioned on the stop there. Called a three yard gain for Reed. Clock is running. Davison, Davison would like nothing more than a three minute drive for a score here. Not let Midland get the ball back. Midland meanwhile, looking for that three and out. Hall's gonna keep it. Cuts, great, oh man, he just swarmed on her. Terrific. By a wall of blue. Terrific running to the football there. Where in the stop, Kamola was there. A lot of chemics there for a big four yard loss. Where does a terrific job here. He's gonna get up into the mess and now come down and you can see everybody's gonna run right to this spot right there. And they're just gonna hang on and make great plays. Sasitki, Gordon. That was a team tackle there. Yes, it was. Third and 11. You can stop him on third and long here. A lot of options Empty out there for Davidson. Empty backfield, Dave. Empty backfield. Hall rolls left, fires in the dirt. There's a flight flag. It's probably going to be a hold. And uh, Midland will decline that, certainly. Still enough time for another touchdown. Yep. Certainly will decline that and bring up a fourth and 11. And uh, watch out for money on the return. This is where he shines. 125 remaining in the half. Midland. Midland is going to get, get the ball back position. in very good field position. Midland hanging around here, down by five. Davison scored on, essentially on three big plays. It's a flag on the play, ball start, send it back five yards. A little bonus yardage for Midland. Makes it fourth and 16, back from the 29. We'll see if the, if the punter Tries to avoid money here. I'm gonna look to see where the oh, left, little flinch left, right there by the guard. Flinch, right. See if they try to avoid money with one of those line drive kicks. High snap over his head. It's gonna go in his end zone. A race for the ball. And he, he kicked the ball. That's a penalty, isn't it? Yep. Safety. But it's going to be a safety for sure. Smart safety. play by the kicker. Smart play by the kicker. The snap sailed over his head in the end zone. And, uh, and Clifford heads up just to get the safety instead of a touchdown. Hot pursuit. Now, here comes the crucial part. By Hayes. Midler can get the ball back in great field position yeah. with a minute and 16, enough to get a field goal. Could could end up tying this and game. And could end up tie the ball game. Because they're going to have to it's a kick from the 20. play right there. So it's kind of a free two points. 
We're going to go back to where they started on punting the ball back, but it's going to be punting from uh, 10 yards farther back. Midland puts their normal rush on. They get that ball in the end zone. They were playing for the return, which, which they should have. Yeah, they were absolutely. And it's one of those things. You know, Big break. It's a, it's a monster Wait, two points. Doesn't this game almost it's seem like it's fabulous Davison's game? game and, yeah. But here's Midland, Midland down by three. Just not hanging in. Midland's going to tie They're fighting. You're right. Flying. I, I have been very impressed with the tenacity of Midland, especially their defense. You know, they've had, uh, Davison's only had big plays. Right. Two big runs by the quarterback right. and a big run by Reed. By Reed gives it down there, yeah. I'm so they're actually going to kick it off. Long kick. Wow, that's a great kick. Grove's going to take it at the 20. Looking for some room. Gets to the left. Grove still on his feet, fighting ahead for more yardage. And a late flag. We'll see what the flag is. That's on Davison. It's going to be uh, put in, in Davison territory. What a run by Grove. He was not to be denied. That's the tenacity we're talking about by the Chemex. And, uh, yeah, that's a big one. Face mask. Five, or a five-yard face mask penalty. The ball is in Davison territory. 49-yard line with a minute seven to go. So, another big break for Midland. Let's see if they can capitalize. And if effectively, they got to get to somewhere around the 20-yard line. Midland, two timeouts remaining. Each team, remember, used the timeout the very first series of the game. Fake the handoff, Metner. It's a flag, it's probably a hold. It's about a four yard gain, but the umpire threw the flag, which is almost always holding. Now here comes the question. Do you go into the locker room 1916, happy with 1916, or do you take a chance? Well, we're gonna be first and 20, right? Yeah. I mean, this is where it gets. This is where. Honestly, I think I'd uh, say, you know what? We've gone from. This is where the screen play comes into play. Yeah, that's true. This is we're where you, safe. You throw, throw something that you don't want to. You're looking for something big, but you're hoping for something. Or to see if money can break one. But I don't. You. I don't see. Uh, yeah, I do see the screen set up to the wide side. There, Page right. He's going to go deep with the post to Reed. In double coverage, and it's uh, incomplete. Dangerous throw, double coverage, well covered, was Reed. Well, so much for that. He decided to go for it. But maybe uh, 45 seconds to go. I know, maybe, you know, like Coach Memories feel, you know, we got some momentum. We've had some good things go our way. Let's see if we can make a make a play. A little more of a bunch formation here. I see Money get the ball here. Nope, fakes left. The wheel route to Money. He's going deep. He's got his man beat. Got him! Money on his feet. He's going to go the distance. Oh, what a play by Midland. Martin Money with the big play. Stepped out of bounds. Oh, they're going to call him out. Oh, yeah. my. One on one. Money out of the backfield. You can see him coming on the sideline here. Well executed and play. Great play. throw by Metner. And a terrific catch. And I have no yeah. idea where he's. He does. Oh, right there. At the 19, he stepped out. Maybe well, they called him maybe on the previous step at the 23. He, he was out on the 19, but he must have stepped out there. But huge play to get down into field goal position. Now a couple of tries and a field goal. So 34 seconds remaining. Still two timeouts. Don't forget, Midland can stop the clock. Metner's going to keep it. 
Drives ahead in the center of the field, mm -hmm. inching closer to the goal line. If nothing else, better field goal position. Middle will call timeout with 25.6. That was a great play call. Yeah. They Certainly just wheeled, out uh, of the wheeled money out of the backfield. Pretty safe you're talking about. Instead of a straight fly, you got him uh, where he could uh, beat his man athletically and perfect pass by Metner. Here it comes again. You can see he's going to oh. So, what do you say, Coach? Two or one timeout. Twenty-five seconds to go. Do you play it safe and just set up well, for the field goal? You're, in, you you're in field goal range right now. As I said, you had to get inside the twenty. So I take a shot. The second and four, I take two shots. Might as well. At the one timeout, so they, you can. You can still throw the ball over the middle. Grove split wide to the right. Metner back to pass. He's going to read in the corner of the end zone. Call oh, it! Oh, what a catch! Oh, touchdown, One Kenneth. arm catch in the corner of the end zone. Oh, my. Oh. Mitchell Reed hauls it in. What a play by Reed. He gets into the corner here. And makes a great catch. Metter looks right. This is right. a one-arm catch. Reed up with one hand. Oh keeps my it in. goodness! Was that fabulous or what? Great, uh, great throw by Metner. Throwing some, showing some moxie, and then Reed hauls it in for the score. Extra point. The line drive is good. Good hold again by Metner. Schwartz the extra point, and just like that, Midland on top, 23-19. Again, we're going to see a terrific move by Reed to the inside, and now he's going to break out, so it's a post corner, and it's a terrific throw by Cade Methner up in the air, nice and soft, and watch the catch by Mitchell Reed. Mitchell's the son of Paul Reed, who's a coach at Bullet Creek, was a coach at Meridian in St. Louis. Coached the Dow with me for a number of years. Like was, uh, and he played played here, played football and baseball here. We were good friends in high school. Graduated with Paul from Midland High in 1980. Uh, he'll be a proud dad on that one for sure. And uh, hey, let's give credit to the offensive line. They've done a terrific job tonight. Bender can get comfortable back exactly. there. He's got time to throw. He He's been able to step up and into his throw, and that's been a problem during the year where he's, he's had a little bit of happy feet at times, but now tonight he has really established himself as a terrific quarterback. He, his, uh, he did, like even if you compare it to last year, he just is plays with a lot more confidence. He's a very confident guy back there right now. Well, he's having a terrific first half. Terrific first half. And so the uh, young man for Davison uh, being helped off the field, that's Dylan Johnson. Daryl Johnson. No, Dylan Johnson. Um, so Midland will line up for the kickoff. This. Uh, this could be one of those pooch kicks. They definitely don't want to give up big, big return here. I imagine Roland will be back there. To, Roland and Reed will be back there. They're big play guys. So they're going to not let that happen. Davis and two timeouts uh, remaining. The coaching staff is uh, walking down to the field from the press box. Is that a sign that uh, they're taking a knee? Yeah, that's a sign that we're going to go for the bomb. Pooch kick, and again, out of bounds, the third time tonight that Midland has kicked it out of bounds. So no time goes off, and uh, it'll go out to the 35. Not really what they were looking for there. Ball just seemed, they're trying that pooch, and he's like almost like he's trying to get too fine with it. Exactly. And uh, instead of 
having a bigger target. Just just get inside the hash marks instead of inside the numbers. So yeah, they're Midland's gonna read instead of taking the yards, it's probably a good play by uh, Davison here. If they can uh, get the ball in the hands of one of their big play guys, see if they can turn it into something big. So Schwartz will try it again from his 35. This is a high kick, this is a nice kickoff. Roland fields it at the 13. He cuts up the middle, and uh, but he's hauled down at the 31. Grove on the tackle. Roland just kind of glides when he runs, you notice that? But he's hauled down. So they give up four yards on the exchange, but they were really hoping he could break something big. That was a good decision by Davison. Good yeah. decision. I mean, they want th they want their guy to run it back. Right. You know, we talked about special team mojo. You know, that the, the coverage on kickoffs for Midland is outstanding. So, see if they try to hit a home run here with Roland with 13 seconds to go. Kind of say, why not, right? Exactly. Three wideouts to the right. Reed in the backfield. It's back to pass under heavy duress. Lefty running the wrong way. Fires downfield and he's caught. It's going to be uh, Gamola on the coverage and the tackle, but uh, first down for Davison out to the 46. That was a heck of a play by Hall. He's the left-hander running right. And so Davison probably should call timeout here. There's four seconds to go. They have two left. They might as well just go for it all here. But with this Davison team, every play can be a little nerve-wracking in that uh, you know Roland can break one at any time. Hall has shown it twice. Reed certainly can. What the Midland High defensively is saying, hey, we just got to keep him out of the end zone. This is where you want to be in a little bit of a prevent and not allow the bomb to occur. Right. If they throw it under, then just make the tackle. There's only going to be time for one play. It's going to be very interesting to see how Midland handles this. Four seconds remaining. Midland has rallied. It was 19-7. But I a will touchdown, a safety, and another touchdown. I will be honest with you. Martin Money would be my safety yeah. right now. He's on the sideline. I'd have him back on about the 20-yard line and say, okay, don't let... Don't, don't let, let him one. score. Yeah, don't <laughs> let him score. Let's see if they go. Not, not real, no real. S and uh, yeah, ball no start. Now, I have no idea <laughs> what Davison is thinking by running a guy in motion and then stopping him right there. I mean, you're not doing anything. All right. All you've done is now taken away the ability to throw the ball in the end zone. I mean, he's got to throw 65 yards. So they got Servinsky man coverage out there. No real safety help over on the right side. No. I think they put him in motion to bring the safety over. Because he is, he steps up, flags everywhere. He's got, he's sacked. And so it's all for naught. Big sack by Ryan Sasitki. I'd like to say that Davison has no answer for Midland's rush. Their, their offensive line is larger, stronger, but not better. You know what, Coach? Midland, obviously, Coach Metner happy with the four-point lead, but I think he's just got to be really happy with how this team has played. The offense has clicked. Really, it's three plays that the defense hasn't played well. And uh, or they just had three big plays. Was it for Davison? But their base defense doing a great job. And uh, whew, this is one exciting well, game. The question is, did Davison leave their game on the bus? Because they have not looked like a top 10 team, other than a few broken plays, mm -hmm. in my mind. And it, to me, they're broken plays. And 
they, they haven't really done the kind of things you'd like to see out of a top 10 team. They're relying on speed and the, and but defensively they haven't played very well either. No, Midland, Midland has played outstanding football. This is probably and stayed the best. right with it. This is the best I've seen him. And this, this uh, may be uh, the best we've seen Cade Metner play. This is the best the I've best seen half Cade of Metner play. Yes, he's been terrific. Yes, it's, he has. And so here we are with homecoming for Midland High, and uh, we're going to send it down to the field for all the homecoming festivities led by the Midland High Marching Band, the homecoming court celebration, and, uh, and all that goes with uh, a great Midland Chemic homecoming. So we will send it down to the field and see you in the second half. Ladies and gentlemen, under the direction of Mr. William Monroe, Mr. Chris O'Connell, and Mrs. Karen Walser, with percussion specialist Judith Peterson, it's the Midland High School Chemic Marching Band. Band, take the field. Fielding 195 musicians, this year's band features drum majors Lauren Gullo, Aiden Haas, Aubrey Root, and Joshua Danielson. Tonight's opener is a medley tribute to all things up. We will start with music from the wonderful Pixar movie and then move to the fifth dimensions up, up, and away. We'll then top it all off with some music from Star Trek. So take a soaring ride through the sky with this year's theme, up. Band, are you ready?
card is under the direction of Ms. Katie Stearns and Ms. Crystal Forsberg. This award-winning group is an outstanding addition to this season's halftime show. And tonight, they will rock with the band to Fall Out Boy's big hit entitled, Light Em Up. Ladies and gentlemen, your Midland High coming marching band and the 2017 Pom Pom Squad. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment that you have been waiting for as we introduce our 2017 homecoming court. First, let us introduce and give a cheer for our principal, Mr. Jeff Jaster. He is being escorted tonight by Palmer's Lillian Matajak and cheerleader Sarah Jean. Once again, Mr. Jaster, your chemic principal. Next, let's meet your class representatives. First, for the freshman class, Kimberly Wiggins. She is escorted by her parents, Anne Marie and Christopher Wiggins. Kimberly is the third Wiggins family member to go through Midland High School. She plans to participate on the soccer team in the spring and enjoys spending time with her family. Our second freshman representative, Tanner Squires. Tanner is escorted by his parents, Emily and John Squires. Tanner is on the drum line with the Midland High Marching Band and plans on trying out for the Midland High Hockey Team. Tanner wishes to thank all of his classmates for voting for him. Ladies and gentlemen, your freshman representatives, Kimberly Wiggins and Tanner Squires. Our sophomore representatives include Misa Halfin. Misa is escorted by her mother and father, Mayumi and Will Halfin. Misa is currently on the Chemic Swim Team and is a sophomore representative on Student Council and on the ten tennis team. Our second sophomore representative is Parker Krenzlein. He is escorted by his mother, Amy Krenzlein. 
Parker's hobbies include hockey and homework. He is currently a member of Victory Honda U16 AAA hockey team, and his ambitions are to become a Division I hockey player. Ladies and gentlemen, your sophomore representatives, Misa Helfen and Parker Krenzlein. Next, our junior representatives. First junior representatives is Samantha Van Sumeren. She is escorted by her parents, Leanne and Mark Van Sumeren. Samantha has been a member of the Chemic Basketball, Soccer, and Cross Country teams. She enjoys running and spending time with her dog, Fletcher. Also junior representative, Nathan Streetmatter. Nathan is being escorted by his parents, Kimberly and Matthew Streetmatter. Nathan is involved in DECA and BPA, he is also on the Chemic Cross Country Track and Swim Teams. Ladies and gentlemen, your junior representatives, Samantha Van Sumeren and Nathan Street Matter. And now the first of our senior representatives, Allison Gray. Allison is being escorted by her parents, Dave and Pamela Gray. Allison stays busy as a member of the National Honor Society, Midland County Youth Leadership, and the Blessed Sacrament Outreach Team. She has also been a member of the Midland High varsity softball team for the past three years. She enjoys spending her free time with friends and family. Along with her, we have senior representative Matthew Ware, and he is being escorted by his parents, Amy and Steve Ware. Matthew is a member of the Midland High varsity football, wrestling, and baseball teams. He is involved with the National Honor Society, the Kickoff Mentor Program, and the Kiva Club. He has a love for music, playing the piano and cello. Ladies and gentlemen, the first of your senior representatives, Allison Gray and Matthew Ware. Our next senior representative is Riley Rajewski. Riley is being escorted by her parents, Wendy and Dave Rajewski. Riley is a member of the National Honor Society, BPA, and a kickoff mentor here at Midland High. She has also been a part of the Chemic basketball and soccer teams, and she plans on playing soccer next year at Northwood University. Alongside her is Ben Gordon. Ben is escorted by his parents, Carrie and Rob Gordon. Benjamin is a senior class president, a member of the football team, an avid volunteer, and a part of his youth group's worship team. He enjoys spending time with his family, playing guitar, and hanging out with friends. Ladies and gentlemen, your next senior representatives, Riley Wojcicki and Ben Gordon. Our next senior representatives includes Hannah Smith. Hannah is being escorted by her parents, Kristen and Tom Smith. Hannah is a well-rounded senior participating in varsity basketball, student council, sports editor for The Focus newspaper, a member of the National Honor Society, and a kickoff mentor. In her free time, she enjoys the outdoors and running with her dogs. Hannah plans on playing collegiate basketball next year. Alongside of her, our senior representative, Caleb Wolf. Caleb is being escorted onto the field by his mother, Angie Myers, and his father, Greg Wolf. Caleb is a student council executive officer and also the co-captain of the DISC golf team. Outside of Midland High, he is a member of the Midland Christian basketball team and is actively involved in his church. Ladies and gentlemen, your third senior representatives, Hannah Smith and Caleb Wolf. And finally, the king and queen of homecoming 2017, your queen, Hannah Bartels, and your king, Quinn Seberger. Hannah is escorted this evening by her parents, Jolyn and Michael Bartels. Hannah is an active member of the National Honor Society, a kickoff mentor, and is in her 13th year as a member of the Girl Scouts. She has a visual, she has a very visual eye and is a member of the Photography Club. She also loves to sing and is a member of the best choir in town, the Midland High Meister Singers. Quinn is escorted by his parents, Peggy and Jeff Seberger. Quinn is a proud member of both the varsity soccer team and Chemic Drumline here at Midland High. He is involved in the National Honor Society, Midland County Youth Leadership, and Kiva Club. Quinn enjoys music, going to concerts, and being outdoors with his friends. Ladies and gentlemen, your queen and king for 2017 homecoming, Hannah Bartels and Quinn Seberger. Ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause, please, for your 2017 homecoming courts.
And now we will turn it back over to your Midland High Chemic Marching Band for the Midland High School Fight Song. close out the halftime festivities. Let's announce the winners of the banners from the parade earlier today. First of all, for your clubs, in fourth place was GSA. In third place, the choir. In second place, the National Art Honor Society. And in first place for the clubs, the International Baccalaureate students. Congratulations, IB. And now for the classes in third place, we have the sophomore class. In second place, the junior class. And in first place, the class of 2018, your senior class. Congratulations, senior. We are back getting ready for our second half kickoff. Tremendous job uh, by the Midland High Marching Band as always. And congratulations to everyone on the homecoming court on your special day and um, and, this, and the great honor. So uh, it's homecoming, just an awesome time uh, on a high school and uh, this year, no exception. So as we head to the second half, again, this is Dave Marsh bringing the action along with Frank Aldemore of our Midland High Davison football game. The Chemex on top, 23-19 at the half. We're going to look back at the first half highlights. And uh, a lot of highlights there were, Coach, in this first half. Some kind of first half. I'll tell you, there's a lot of action that, that we were able to see. Here's the first one. Quarterback takes the ball, makes a break, broken play, breaks a tackle, and then just surprisingly outruns. Just has the, deceptive just, speed. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe it's because he's a stocky guy, but if he can he move. Did, he did. He broke the tackle and he ran for the touchdown. And that was a heartbreak right off the bat for Midland. Now, this one right here is the interception where Methner gets into the poorly thought out play. And here's, a, here's the little touchdown I play I really like with a great comeback block. And we have a block by Cervinsky Could off it, the Couldn't end up being a big play. In yeah, it is. It's going to be a big play. This is the, the fake the money and the run by Methler. He breaks the tackle, and he gives you 100% here and goes from there. And then again, here's the quarterback, Paul, making a play. Gets, the defense gets caught up in the wash, and he he's just, able to make that play for a touchdown. Everybody. Right. That was a pretty good play by number 10. He tried to beat the, the official. And here's a pass by Methner right down the pipe to Carter Grove. Grove is wide open. The safety fell down. And he gets into the end zone. It, <laughs> you hate to see this, but I don't understand why he waited so long. That you just dive on the ball and kick it out of the air push it out of the end zone. You yeah. take the safety. That was yeah. a, pretty, a pretty good play by 34. It was a heads up play. Okay, here's the play to Money down the sideline. Money makes it 
Outstanding catch. Should have been a touchdown. He steps out of bounds two different times and gets into the end zone. Just and enough contact by the DB to ride right him out. Right. And the last play here is probably, I think, the highlight catch of the year right here. This is the best catch I've seen this year. One hand, reached up, pulled it in, did a great job. Mitchell Reed is really developing into a top-notch football player. He's a two-way player, and it's just been great this year. Some stats, Dave. Uh, Mettler has been 7 of 14 for 130 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. He's had seven rushes for 46 yards. Money is, has seven rushes for only 33 yards, two receptions for 51 yards. On the other side, Hall has seven rushes for 143 yards and two touchdowns. And here's a surprising one, and this is a credit to Midland's defense. This is one of the best running backs in the state of Michigan. He's 10 for 64 yards, but he had 47 of them on one run. Yeah. The other nine rushes have been for 17 yards. Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're looking at a defensive effort on the part of the of Midland that we haven't seen for, for a long time. The, the kind of effort we've always come to expect out of a Midland defense. And now we have to see, did Davison leave their game on the bus for a half, which a lot of teams do do, mm -hmm. or are they a pretender rather than a contender? I mean, that's a, or are both teams contenders? You know what I mean? Right. We, we, I kind of well, think neither is a pretender. No, neither. I would have to say both are contenders. I, I would agree with you right there because there's just, uh, this is just, <laughs> that is one exciting half of high school football right there. And uh, the uh, second be, half just so seems many like it big promises plays. to be more. So many big plays. And uh, really a great crowd here, as usual, on homecoming. The home side is packed people uh, along the fence line on the by the concession stand there. Davison obviously traveled pretty well over there. And uh, uh, Davison will get the ball to start the second half. Um, and so we'll see if the, what adjustments are made. You, you kind of think that Davison's the one that has to make the offensive adjustment. Midland's uh, defense certainly has come to play. Isn't homecoming just a lot of fun? We we come in here oh, yeah. and got the parade going, and uh, you can just you all you know, of a sudden get you get excited right I've away. I've always been that. impressed with Midland's homecoming crowd. Always, mm -hmm. the alums come back; they love coming to this game, and uh, you know there's a lot of reunions that go on this weekend. The 1962 class is having a reunion. They're 55th. I'm aware of that because yeah. I was born in 1962. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this, this will be interesting. Um, two excellent coaches uh, we had mentioned obviously Zimmerman for Davison but Eric Metner it's his 10th season at the helm 76 and 26 overall record very impressive and uh, as we mentioned uh, or excuse me Midland will get the ball for the first half that's right they kicked off the first one sailed out of bounds so after uh, dramatic conclusion to the half for the Midland offense. They'll get it right back and see if uh, they can extend this four point lead. Squib kick this time and Grove's gonna take it at the 10. And good coverage there by uh, Davis in that time. Like the uh, Lamar Hay on the tackle. Look like Davison can't quite decide what kickoff strategy they want to employ. So they tried that one. That's probably the best result they've had all night. And so, second half about to begin. Midland possession starting at their own 23 yard line. As you mentioned, the offense played very well tonight. Kay Metner, the uh, son of coach Eric Metner, 
really coming into his own the last three games, I'd say. Little bubble screen to Grove in the middle. If he breaks the tackle, but a good job by Davison. Boy, if he could have broken that tackle. That had a big gain written on it, but uh, Gabe Ellis with a tackle. Kind of a I've been delayed waiting. inside I, screen. I've been waiting for that little jailbreak screen most of the night. I was kind of surprised it came on here, but Still got him five yards and able yep. to play. I just, uh, I, I like it a lot. And I think it's a great play. Productive play on first down. It's a handoff and uh, on the jet sweep, uh, effective play. Caden Jacobs <laughs> takes the handoff. Came in motion from the left side. Uh, came across, going to pick up first down yardage out to the 34. So mixing it up a little bit. Again, I still plays. say with that, keep the chains moving. That was a, I'm not a big fan of the jet sweep, but I will give it credit right there. So uh, trying to keep Davis and guessing, two plays that were not run in the first half. Here he comes again, this time the handoff to Money, and uh, not much room to run. Got about a yard on the play. Good job by the Cardinal defense swarming and uh, containing money. Really, for the most part, both the big name running backs have been been contained. Been con money on pass receptions. Yeah, he's done more damage yeah. receiving. It Three. kind of surprises me they don't throw to Reed at all. So money split out to the left this time. Kate, Kate Metner alone in the backfield. Under pressure, steps up, fires downfield. He's got Mitchell Reed wide open. He's got it. All the way down to the 31-yard line. That was a terrific play by Mepner. He's going to come out and make this play. What I and he's going to come out and make a play out here and see Reed sitting right in the middle of the field. And this is a terrific play. Great def great offensive blocking. And then you see that that's just a terrific play right there. The safety got lost, and Midland's able to come up with a big play. Now they're in four down territory. Boy, what I've seen in him is poise uh, in Metner. This time he fakes a jet sweep, keeps it, turns ahead before he's chopped down by number 17 after about a four yard gain. Decent pickup on first down. So down to the 25 yard line or go the Chemex first possession of the second half. Midland was down 19 to seven uh, in the first half and has scratched and clawed their way to the lead here, 23-19 to start this second half. Trying to get some more. Metner's gonna keep it again, cuts up. Just could not elude uh, the defense. Gonna gain about a yard. <laughs> Tried to break a couple tackles, but a nice job by uh, number nine, Aaron Gilmore. Gilmore, the right defensive end for Davison. He's got a big cast on his hand, it looks like. He's carrying around a club. He's a good ball player over there. Third and five for the Chemics. That was probably his four down territory here. I, I would have to say it is four down territory. Pitch right to Money. Tries to find room, barrels ahead. He's going to move the chains. That's the pitch that we were talking about. Just classic Midland High football. Moves the chains. Good play here by Money. Comes out onto the perimeter. We get the protection out here by the blockers. And he's just going to turn it right up and in. Here comes the guard and tackle. 85 does a tremendous job and he just gets right up in that seam and that's Midland pitch. 64 again. Uh, Cameron White. Midland turns it ahead. Going to get down to the 15 yard line. With the keeper. Chewing up some time off the clock here on this opening drive under the eight minute mark. And moving the chains. Perfect. 
second and eight. Money, the lone setback. Mitchell Reeves split wide to the right. Grove wide left. And it's gonna be Money. Plows ahead. Just tenacious money runner. Runner. You cannot block, you cannot tackle Money with one arm. You're gonna see right here, he's gonna run up in there and you cannot tackle him with one arm. He's a very powerful runner. And what's impressing me is the Midland offensive line is moving yeah. Davis and back. I was gonna say the offensive line is They've had a having great a night. tremendous They've had a great night. Game. Third and four, Midland. <coughs> Uh-oh, he drops the snap and he's just gonna fall on it, probably wisely so. Oh man, that hurts. Third and four, deep in the territory and uh, just couldn't control the snap. It might have snapped before he was ready. We have a nice, there, it no, just, just went right it. through his hands. It wasn't a bad snap. He, he was thinking about what he was gonna do with it. And uh, big loss. Fourth and 14 Fourth after it was third and four. So Midland uh, is gonna call timeout, 622 remaining. Folks, do you like watching your favorite local sports? Well, stay tuned this fall for more games and events on the MCTV network. MCTV volunteers and staff will be televising the, the Dow homecoming football game. Marching band showcase the Midland versus Dow game and the Midland versus Dow volleyball match uh, coming up. Check out MCTV on Facebook to follow us and get up-to-date information on all the programming and events. So as you can see on the screen, you too can be a volunteer to for these productions. You can go to the MCTV training um, orientation workshops are Saturday, October 14th and November 11th, starting at 10 a.m. Cost is just $45, which includes the annual access user fee. Call 837-3474 to sign up or go to the MC learn more on the city of midland.gov website well here we go fourth and 14 blitz by davison little screen oh it had potential but uh the blitz came on and metner just had to unload it um the errant pass so the well one of the things that happens is a lot of times when you do this your offensive line on this side has to be able to protect that quarterback long enough so that when he comes back and they allow that play to, to come back like that. Well, they didn't do it. They just kind of let him go and they don't protect enough to get him going. And they, they brought the middle linebacker and they that the was right set end. up though. I yeah. mean there was if he could have let him just the the blitz, it was a, it was it a was good a, defensive it was call. A good defensive call, a good offensive call. It yeah. just didn't work. So nearly six minute drive. The fumble. Comes up empty. The yep. fumble. The what, one mistake Almost, on the drive. Yep, you can't. The fumble. So Davison. Well, let's see what Davison did in the ha at halftime. Reed on the quick hitter. Juts out to the left. Cuts up the middle. Uh oh, it's off to the races. Finally hauled down. Mitchell Reed on the stop mm -hmm. along right, now, with now, Hayes. Now, see, Dave, I've been waiting for that. I did not understand a, a running back like Reed going north, east and west. Right. He is a great north and south runner. He, he wants to get there. Watch when he gets up into this chute right here. And well, when he does that, he is dangerous. You asked what the adjustment was. I think you just found it. There it is. It's, a, it's an inside, a quick, good blocking, inside fold by the wing back to get onto that linebacker and did a great job. Reed shaking up a little bit on the play. He'll have to come out. So all the way down to the 38. Boy, the tables turned fast here. Reed again on the quick handoff. And uh, nice play by uh, 24, Sisiki. Boy, he filled that nicely, didn't he? Yes, he did. That looked like that could be another big gainer. And uh, Sisiki, a sure tackler, held him to a one yard gain. Sasaki 
Sister Haley, a terrific volleyball player back in the day for Midland High. Graduated a couple years ago. Second and nine. Just over five minutes to go in the third quarter. Oh boy, that's Walker just exploding. There is a flag on the play. We'll see what the call is. Boy, they read that nicely. Vaughn Walker just blew that up. It's a false start on uh, Davis. I'm sure they'll decline that. Look at Watch Walker. Watch right Walker come through right through the middle. Nobody blocked him. Well, they both left him. And they, yeah. Again, that's what we call a lookout block. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's just not going to block anybody. Great job by Walker. Great quickness. Andrew Capua, number 15. Midland's quickness is better than Davidson's strength in, in this, at this point in the game. Davidson is a little befuddled. I don't think they've been here before. Third and 13 for Davison. They're in a dog fight tonight, that's for sure. Reed swings to the right. They may be looking for him. Fires downfield. Intercepted! Jacob Gamola. Play free safety. Picks it off. Great job, Gamola. And the Chemex are in business. Now, Over. when you when you bring Reed out in motion like that, from where he's in this position right here, what happened was Midland now drops off like that. And the result is you got a guy sitting in there. Now you got a quarterback who's gonna run to his left and throw back. And when that happens, this is what happens. Interceptions. Overthrew his over man and there was man. Gamola, cannot, Johnny on the spot. I would tell quarterbacks, when you roll one way and throw back, get in a tackling position <laughs> because you're going to have to save a They're touchdown. Good. You're going to throw an interception. Metner is going to keep it. Going to get a couple maybe. 4.22 to go in the uh, third quarter. And so uh, Kemic defense rises to the occasion again. We have yet to see Davison's quarterback roll to his left. Right. They've, he's rolled to his right each time. And he's time. a lefty. And he's a lefty. Yeah. You, it just, it's a recipe for disaster. Metner, he's going to roll right. Throws right. Throws deep. He's got Grove. Got him. Grove still on his feet all the way down to the 15 yard line. Metner on the money again. Throwing to his favorite target, Carter Grove. And the Met and Midland right I'm, back. I'm in interested business. in seeing what happened out here on the replay to see what Davison did to for Grove to get that open. Because it, they it's both a hitch and looked go and just bit. a little hitch and go. They bit and, on the hitch. And they're all out here. Wow. Pitch left to money. Cuts back. Plows ahead for a couple. Down to the 14. Bring up second and eight. Clock is running. Money shaking up a little bit. He may have a cramp. That's not. Not what they need. We've got an injury timeout here. See the marching band having a great time down on the track. We'll see what. Uh, situation is with money he's holding his leg I hope that's not his knee he's holding where it looks like he's in a lot of pain well, the trainers are in no hurry they to get are out not there. in a hurry I mean really they're kind of treating it like a can't cramp aren't they they are treating it like a cramp but So they're, I think he, uh, I think money when we played Flint, didn't you have some, uh, he had some cramping, cramping too? Yes. So, boy, the, uh, 
Big yeah, plays. so so big, coach big uh, plays. Um, you know as well as anybody, so Coach Metner coaching his son, which is a neat experience. I'm sure you did Fantastic you coached experience. your son Greg back in uh day he was an excellent receiver. He was and my son Tony was gonna be a good running back and had injured his knee the summer before his okay. junior year, falling off a trampoline. Oh and, boy. And so he had to have surgery and that kind of limited his his future. Uh, so what's that like? Is it odd at practice when you're coaching your son? Well, or is he just another one of the guys until he, you go home for dinner or what? No. Coach Ligup was allowed to yell at, uh -huh. at Greg, mm -hmm. and I wasn't. Okay, that was and the arrangement. And I was allowed to yell at Coach Ligup's son, okay. and he wasn't. All right. So that, that's how we that's well, how we, we have an it. understanding. We have, you know, I never <laughs> said anything to Greg other than, and that was just so you didn't going. get in trouble with your wife later on. Well, there's, yeah, they, we knew who the boss in that <laughs> family was. But yeah, it was great. It was uh, it was a wonderful experience, and I tell you, the most fabulous experience was uh, walking off the field with Greg. He was a freshman, and we walked off the field at East Lansing together, on our way to the Silver Dome. That was a, oh. that was a terrific experience mm -hmm. for me. I loved every minute of yeah. it. Yeah, and. You know, I watched him mature over the years and be a great player. Get one of the great performances in Midland Dow rivalry, as I remember, his senior year, wasn't it? A phenomenal game. So, Money, this is cause for concern. He's uh, hobbling, no weight on his left leg at all. And so, uh, but Midland uh, was second and nine. Metner fires, got his man. Nice job, Mitchell Reed on the reception again. Mitchell Reed runs a great pattern here, runs a little out pattern, and he's able to get the ball. Metner gets the ball in his hands, and again makes it easy. It's third and short here, and now we've got a big play coming, and unfortunately money's not in there, but they're gonna rely on Metner, and I'm gonna bet it's gonna be a little cross buck. And looks like Sasicki is now in at running back, number 24, Ryan Sasicki's a junior. Played a great defensive game, now he's in on offense. Metner's gonna keep it, and he's not gonna get the first. He's gonna lose some yardage. So middle big, up by four big here. here. The field goal you makes it the field a... Goal? I kicked the field I goal. I kicked the field goal. Your running back is out, right? So money is not part of the equation here. You turn it into a touchdown lead if he's successful. So and sure enough, that's what they're going to do. Uh, Metner will hold for Schwartz. Schwartz is converted on his three, uh, three extra point attempts so far this game. Looks like it'll be a, he's spotting it at 16, making it a 26-yard attempt. Good hold, good, good leg. Great, no question about it. Drills it dead center. And uh, nice job by Metner on the hold. He kind of had to pick it up off the ground. No, that's pretty good I snap. Like, I like not chasing the points. I like right. getting the points. You know, you say to yourself, well, okay, I'm still four points in. They got to score a touchdown and go ahead. Now they got to score a touchdown and get an extra Just point. Right, you know, and, and they've missed and twice. They, and exactly. So look at it again. Good snap, good yeah, hold. Yeah, it was a good snap. Wow, it was a good snap, but a great hold. So, 26-19, Midland extends the lead. Minute 51 to go in the third quarter. Midland pretty much dominated that third quarter. Yeah. Pretty much. Two long drives. Two long drives. Really? Remember, remember what he said? Davison again, one big play. Slow the game yeah. down. Limit their possessions. Well, the time of possession in that quarter, there's still two minutes to go, but Midland has had the ball a long time. Schwartz kickoff. Uh-oh, it's trouble. It's a free ball. It could be for anybody, and it is going to be recovered by, I think, by Davis. It looked like number 17 got it, got it but uh, oh now that's my. an effective that boot kick. That was terrific. Um, and that is just... Not Roland uh, let it hit the ground and it bounced right over his head. 
where you're going to see the ball, it's going to bounce. And when it bounces right in this area right here, now Roland gets lost. Yeah. And now he can't get it, and now he's lost. And there's Gamola, runs and him over to make sure he can't recover exactly. it. Nice uh, heads up play by Gamola. Now, field position. Here's what you're talking about, ball in the Field position, keep him in line. that hole. Look for a turnover now, look for a turnover. I, it wouldn't surprise me if the quarterback keeps the ball. He has enough to read flag on the play. And Reed is just buried. It's going to be a false start on uh, Davison. Should be no play, right? Here's the thing. Davison cannot block Midland. They just cannot block him. Midland is swarming to the ball. Midland's linebackers and strong safeties are coming up hard to make the play. The and the quarterback, even runs. when he runs a play action, does not have enough time to throw. So they will decline it. There's no gain on the carry. That left side of the Kemic defense all over Reed on that carry. So it'll bring second and 10. Davison. Back quick pass, flag again. Rolling with the reception. He's going to try to reverse field, end up losing a ton. Oh, great defense by the Cummings again. Ben Gordon this time with the tackle for a big loss. He just kept trying to make something out of nothing and Lost about okay, now we have a yards. little play here out here. It's a quick throw to roll and out in the corner here. And he's, he's going to come back and make a play in here, but it's not going to work. Flag was illegal procedure. It's going to be declined. This is a terrific job right here. Servinsky Sir, made the Sir play. Vinsky makes the play. He's just fighting. That Midland defense is absolutely fantastic tonight. They are playing inspired football right now. Davison is a little bit befuddled. Third and 16 from the four yard line. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. This is a big play for both teams. Quarterback's gonna keep it. And this time he's hauled down, nothing doing. Ryan Sasitki, who's playing a phenomenal game, brings him down, and Davison will punt from deep in their own territory. It's going to be, uh, instead of money, Servinsky's going to be back deep to receive. Money, uh, he's uh, still hobbling. He's trying to shake off that injury, but... Uh, not healthy yet. So from his own end zone, Davis, Davison uh, will be punting. It's uh, Clifford again. Kick, short kick, shanks it. Midland needs to get out of the way. Good bounce for Davison, but it's gonna be tremendous field position for Midland at the 36 yard line. You talked about some mojo, they got the mojo going right now. In all facets, the defense is uh, oh, this, no question. roaring. This Last is a play complete, of the quarter. Complete game by the Midland team. Fourth quarter. As I say, Davison did nothing in that quarter. And so uh, <clears throat> we talked to Coach Metner earlier this. Uh, this week, kind of a little bit about the game. Uh, you know, one thing he said, he was just hopeful they could uh, hang in, keep it close to the fourth quarter and give themselves a chance. Well, they have given themselves a chance for sure. Seven point lead as we head to the fourth quarter and uh, Midland feeling it right now. This is where you really want to try to avoid a mistake. Well, this you is don't want to give there are no Davis in life. No turnovers. This is where you have no turnovers. You say that, okay, we got to just keep, we're in four down territory, and a field goal here makes it a two score yeah. game. So, 
So Caden Jacobs, number 19, is the setback now. He's a Caden junior. Jacobs is a, is a pretty good running back. Mettner puts Grove in motion. A little confusion. Mettner's going to keep it. He's got room to run. There he goes. Kate Mettner, he's gone. Wow. A broken play. This? Heads up. We talked about the poise of Kate Mettner. Kept the play alive. Saw some green and just blew past the defenders. Wow, what a job by Mettner. Well, you have the little nest right in here. And now Jacobs goes in here. And then Mether just kept the ball and just break. We, we see this happening out here where the safety gets lost. Well, Safety's Jake completely lost. Now he gets blocked by 67. And Reed made enough of a block on one to make a play. And here we go. The extra point is up and good. Instead of three points, we got seven. seven points. 14 point lead by Midland. Wow. And now watch the watch the great blocks up front where Midland just stays with their guys. And now there's the bump and the mistake. He pulls it out. And there's the block right there. Ethan Volmering, what a play by Ethan. And he off came to the back races. And, and off the races they go. But I tell you something, Ethan's done a great job all night. This offensive line, the offensive has, uh, line has been terrific. The defensive line, led by Matt Ware. Yeah. And, and Matt's probably given 50 to 60 pounds to the guys over him, but they can't block him. The offensive line, again, we mentioned is uh, James Harris at center. Watch this right here. That's the, that's the block. Reed gets a little block on uh, number one, and uh, Methner's off to the races. Terrific playing. Another pooch kick, this time fair caught at the 16 yard line. Midland will take that, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll tell you, they're a little befuddled. They're befuddled, they don't know what to do on these kickoffs. Special team mojo, they are befuddled. Somebody said, okay, fair catch those. Well, the ball was right at you. And he had room to run. Yeah, he did. Just give us, take it at the 17. Finishing up by that offensive line. Cullinane at the right guard position. Volmering, you mentioned the left tackle and right tackle Cameron White. Those, those young men have come to play tonight. So here we go. Davidson in a, hasn't been in this position much the last few years. 33-19 Chemic lead early in the fourth quarter. Back to pass, heavy pressure, it's a screen. Oh my, are what you kidding me? Play. Blown up by Ben Gordon. He read the play from his safety uh, position. And uh, the runner is shaking up, is that Reed? Oh my, look at Gordon. He sniffed this play out. Look right at him react. Sees him react. And it is uh, Reed. It's Reed and Reed and is. He just runs through him. Wow. I would, I would venture to say momentum is all on the side you of think? the chemics. They got it going and, all three and phases you right can now. You see that uh, Davison is shaking their heads and there's a little despondency on their part. I think that's uh, Tarek Reed uh, shaking up. And uh, they're going to have to be helped off the field. Yeah, it's hard to tell what. Uh, see the Midland fans concerned. Sportsmanship shown by Midland. He's, yeah, he's not putting any weight on that right leg, so the. Both the uh, running backs have had leg problems tonight, both number 21 on both teams. So that could change things a lot for Davison. Their star running back, one of the best in the state, uh, being helped off the field. 
here with 11.24 to go in the game. How about that Midland defense? That was quite a play by Gore. I mean, that was a real big time hit. That was, and it was a great physical play, but a great mental play. He read that, that screen and just blew it up. Quarterback's gonna keep it. He's dangerous, we know that. And he's gonna get close to the first down. There's flag. a flag on the play. That might be a hold. Midland's clapping. They feel that it's gonna be on Davison. Jesse Hayes had pressure, or he got in there, and it's uh, he's the one clapping. And I think it's a hold, so. More good news for Midland is uh, going to be uh, third and about one instead. March back, and it's going to be second and long. All the way back to the five yard line. Wow. Remember, coach, this game, it was 19 to 7. Yes, this game. I, I remember that. 19 to 7, and, and it's been Midland all Midland since has, then. Has just been fantastic since that point. Davison has no answer for Midland's defense. It's just a swarming. As I said, there's 11 guys within five yards of the line of scrimmage. Quarterback keeps. And all over him. It's a pretty good run, actually, by <laughs> the quarterback. But there's five blue shirts around there. Gordon. That's Christian Gordon. A blue swarm. And it's going to be third and long. Third and 22 to be exact. Now this is where the game can completely get out of hand for Davison. If they just try to they, chuck they one up. Chuck one up there and it gets picked off. Even if it gets knocked down. They got your back to the end zone. Wide out, one to the right, one to the left. Hall is looking deep left. He's open and he's got his man. Wow, what a pass. <laughs> Risking a penalty here. He's kind of barking I at thought, uh, Yeah, I thought that was a little. Uh, Honestly, I think that warned it a flag. This is a, just a up the sideline move on Cervinsky. Uh, number one makes a, a great play. There's a little break to the inside. He just threw it up for grabs. That was a great ball. And he puts it right on the money. And if he doesn't fall down, it's a touchdown. Yeah, all the way out to the 47. So completely changed field position. It did. Cannon Hall, third and 22. And they connect on that. Hall's going to run. Blown up. That's Gordon, or uh, no, Ware came in and just uh, blew that play up. How about Ware? He's, he's on the senior court. Yeah. Um, you know, his family has played here. His father played here. But I think the toughest person is the grandmother. <laughs> Do you, you know how so? I know her? She, she was a parent of mine while oh, I was so here. Oh, so you knew well. You know, I knew her very well. I think she's the toughest of all. <laughs> but Ware is doing a great job tonight. Second 11. Hall back to pass. Oh, man, Vaughn Walker oh, throws down Hall. He had no time to throw because Walker just, uh, oh, man, what a rush. Big play. Midland's push. What's the push on the part of Midland here? And 77 is just not prepared for the speed of Vaughn Walker. So another third in long third and 18 hey uh, Davison has converted on a number of these a couple of third and 22s here's third and 18 so Midland needs to be wary gonna be a jet sweep to Roland and uh, still on his feet but finally run out of bounds that was gonna be tough to gain 18 yards on that play Gets this Kemet defense. Davison may go for it here. It's one of those situations where I, they may have been trying to get at least half the yardage back. 
which they did. They're going to go. It's fourth and seven from the 50-yard line. Here we go, big play. 8-11 remaining in the ball game, 8-12. Oh, and Walker jumps. He's going to turn it into a... Ah, he's going to turn it into a fourth and two. That opens up the playbook quite a bit for Davison. That means the quarterback's we're gonna, keeping the I ball. I was going to say, we're going to see Hall run we're the We're going to see here. the quarterback here. I don't think there's Without much Without Reed, we're seeing the quarterback. Hall is shown to be a tremendous carrier. It's going to be a timeout called by Davison. Probably a good timeout. It's their first of the half, but this is a critical play for them in this game. They... Uh, trying to uh, turn the tide of the ball game and uh, definitely want to keep this drive going, not turn it back over to the middle of the defense. Down by two touchdowns, with just over eight minutes to go in the game. Would you be surprised at any play other than Hall running? I would be completely surprised. They need to get, they need, they need to move the chains here to get in position to get in. They have to get this. See, it's a manageable. It's two touchdowns, still eight yeah. minutes to go. It's very manageable. They got to get it to one touchdown, then a stop, and then hope that they can make a play. Uh, well, that's why they're called timeout here, to make sure, because this is a, the biggest two yards of the game for them so far. If they're going to uh, keep it manageable, not give it back to Midland where they, they can They don't make clock. the first down. This game's over. Lamar Hay is the running back, number 25. Hall does keep it. He's trying to go left, and he gets the edge and more. Still on his feet. All the way to the 29-yard line. Man, he has got quick feet. Yeah, he does. He avoided, he avoided the tackle. This is really a great job out here. By the, by, really a great job in here. But Hall just makes the play around that corner. Watch this. This is a great job of, of the by the. Yeah, well, he just doesn't make the play. Give 16 credit. He hung with that block. But yeah, just uh, all good. Hall is very deceptive in his running. Hall back to pass. Fires looking for Roland, and it's. Did he catch it? He caught, caught the ball. How did he catch it? That wasn't a Roland. It was great coverage by Servinsky. It's just a th throw the ball up in the air and my guy's gonna catch it. This is what this is what's known as a 50-50 ball. Which he just I, goes right down the sideline. I mean, this is good coverage back here. It was great here. coverage. And it wasn't rolling, they went to the, He got his hand on it. Oh, oh, it bounced. It bounced up. I, I got to tell you, boy, that, I don't know. I think that hit the ground. I'd like to see it right here. Blocked again. Servinsky, his second block extra point. So it's still an eight point difference. There's a big crowd around there. Savinsky flying in. What an effort. That's uh, two points he's counted That's, for on blocked extra points. And you know what? That was perfectly blocked. Yeah. I mean, it's just Savinsky's faster than. All right, now, I think the ball's going to hit the ground. It's a great catch. Savinsky great actually uh, breaks up the pass. It was great coverage. He catches the ball on the ground. But here, here we go. Here's the throw. In the air, there it is. Oh, oh boy. It's close. It's close. You can't really. I can't tell. You can't really knock the official on that one. I mean, no, I can't. I got to say. You can? Just, okay. I can't blame him. No. He, no, I mean, you can't blame him. No, I think it's great. Ball's up in the air. But I got to think that. I think it's incomplete. One heck of an effort by yes. number 18. This, yeah. There's no 18 right on the roster. That ball's on the ground. Sorry. Well, we got a ball game, 33-25 now. Give uh, Davison credit, they were uh, almost dead. And the ball's gonna go into the end zone. 
It's a line drive kick. Remember, it was third and 22 back at what the right. five yard line. And right. uh, just, again, big plays have uh, really kept Davison alive here. Now, there's a lot of time left in this game. Well, that's Uncle what I Moe that is uh, uh, changed uniforms right now, I think. See if the Midland offense can respond. They had a tremendous second half here. And now they're going to have to do it without Martin Money, don't forget, who went out uh, earlier in the half with a leg injury. Pitch left to Jacobs. He cuts up. Oh, nicely done. He's going to get the see, first down. See, I really like Jacobs as a running back. He, he's got good size. He's got good speed. He's got excellent hands. And he's got a tremendous offensive line out in front of him. That was the pitch left, and uh, the linemen are getting out and getting their blocks on those pitches. So a uh, nice pickup by Caden Jacobs, the junior. Seven oh five to go. Metner's going to keep it this time. Nowhere to run. He's going to do well to get a couple yards. Good effort by Metner, actually. He was stuck, bottled up at the line of scrimmage, and he was able to slither ahead for a couple. Clock running, 6.45. Metner getting the play call from Coach Metner. Jacobs again will be the setback. Clock runs. I'm in a classic here at Midland Community Stadium. Fake the run, he's going deep. There's gotta be a flag, there is. It's gonna be pass interference. It's intercepted, but, uh, but that one is gonna be comeback Midland ball. He's still running the ball. Still, what an effort by number five. It's going to be all for naught because uh, definitely was interference uh, committed against uh, Reed. Carrington Terry with a, what an effort on that return. Now watch Reed come out here, slip out right over the center. He got held by 17. That's what caused the interception. He grabbed, he, 17 grabbed him as he ran by. So it'll be a first down for the Chemex. That is what caused the interception. Because it held him up that one step. Place the ball yet, but it's going to be a 10 yard penalty and a automatic first down. Should go out to the 45 yard line. Big penalty. Put an asterisk right there. That's a big turn of events. That is a big penalty. That's a game saving that penalty. That might be a bigger right penalty there. than kicking it out exactly. of bounds. Exactly. <laughs> that was big. It's one team with the ball at midfield instead of the other. Metner's trying to milk the clock. It's running. He's pitched left to Jacobs. Good blocking again. He's cut down, but not after picking up four yards. 17 on the stop again. And uh, so got nearly to midfield, just inside the 49, or just beyond it, I should say. Jacobs has done a great job coming in, replacing money. It's the one he went the wrong way on yeah. the one, but it yeah. turned into a touchdown. touchdown. No mistakes here, no mistakes. 
Metner milking the clock. He's waiting until the ref chops it. Metner's going to keep it. And he plows ahead. Good good effort by Gabe Metner. He's having quite a game. He is. and he, he, I'm he, very impressed with him. You know tonight. what? He has the look about him that we're not going to lose this game. You know what I mean? He's uh, just de determined. And uh, Midland's going to call time out, I think, here. No, that he's calling in a play. Not sure where they. It's third and three. They're huddling up quickly. He may wait until the official starts his uh, five second count and then call timeout. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He tried to milk as much time as he could. Big play in this game. If Midland can, uh, if Midland can uh, convert. They're going to be able to chew up a big chunk of this clock. One of the more exciting homecoming games we've had Fan in a while. This has been a fantastic game. It just does. You know, you said the either, however this turns out, you got to say contender on both of these. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Davidson was on the ropes, almost down for the count, and you got to give him credit. Behind their quarterback, they marched down the field and got it to within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Midland comes right back, gets it into Davison territory. Big third down play here. See Money there, number 21, desperately would want to be in this game. Both running backs are out. That's, yep. a, that's a quite a deal. Yeah. It's now in the hands of the quarterbacks. Who can manage the game better? Call upon this offensive line. Metner's going to keep it, and it's got the first down. Went, ran behind the right side of that offensive line. Cullinane and White in center Harris and moves the chain. That's a big first down. Both uh, teams on their uh, key plays where they need to convert go to the quarterback running, and uh, both come up big. Metner, uh, 215 yards passing on the night. 10 for 17. Been equally effective on the ground. You can tell he's pitch left. Jacob, spin move. Still on his feet. He's going to get about three. Makes that nifty little spin move. He made yards out of nothing. I mean, that was a terrific run. And also spinning the inside ensures he stays in bounds and moves it. Keeps the clock moving. See, we get a good, we get good action here. We get good action. We got the flow coming, and they do a great job here of Washington. jamming it up. He makes a move inside, and just yep, the he few saw. yards he got keeps the clock running. So the defense was washed outside, so he spun it inside. Picks up three, second and seven. Three minutes to go. Metner's going to keep it again. Still on his feet. Plows ahead. Another first it's down. It's close. It's close. Depends where they mark it. Oh, they're marking it short. The, the line judge on the far side. The spot looks good, though. Yeah. I think he's got it. He's I don't. Yeah, first down, Chemex. The offensive line is. Uh, is making a statement right here, coach. They're getting their blocks, moving the defensive line back, allowing uh, Metner and Jacobs to uh, get positive yardage on each play. Well, Metner's not messing around. He is really running north and yep. south. He just has that determined feel about him right now. One more first down and this game's over. Metner keeps it again, runs it outside. And he, oh, runs out of bounds, though. He may, uh, he's going to move the chains. Would have been good to stay in bounds, but still, now Davis is going to have to stop him four more times. Another excellent run by Metner. Davison has no answer. Davison cannot. First off, Midland's offensive line is dominating. 
yep. Davis. They're in. winning the line yeah. of scrimmage battle. The game for has sure. been won in the trenches. Mander's going to keep it again. Still on his feet, all the way down to the 12 yard line. So he's a nifty runner, but they are just uh, getting their blocks. I'm, I'm very impressed with this line. Second and two, two minutes to go. This is a, what you call a game, let's win this game drive. They're just gonna chew up the clock. Game's over. Unless there's a mistake here. You just can't and, turn it And the over. game's not, it's not getting out of the hands of Metner. He's gonna keep it all the time. Oh, nope, pitch good. left. Jacobs and tripped up. Nice play by 24. Now Davis will call timeout. With a minute 34 remaining. It'll be, he's gonna lose a couple yards all the way back to the five yard line. Third down. Davison does have one more timeout left. And you know they have the big play capability. They've shown that time and time again. So both teams, as you said, coming to this game, 3-0 and in Saginaw Valley League red division action. The winner of this game remains undefeated along with Lapeer. Piers at Saginaw this week. So here we go. Third and five. Ball at the 15. Metner's going to keep it. He's got room to run. Cuts outside. He's going to. Oh, that's a first, first down. down. That's going to do it. First down, Chemex. He moves the chains again. And that, coach. He's going to do it. Only one timeout left for Davison. What do you say about Cade Mentner to this game? I'd say he had a fabulous game. This is the best I've seen him play. He was a tremendous field general tonight. Great poise, great passing, and just in control. <clears throat> and I can't say enough for the Midland defense. Even no. though they gave up 25 points, those were all big points. When every time it needed to make a play, they did, especially in the second half. Metner again. Don't fumble the ball, go down. Just works his way down to the four. I'm not and, running uh, a play. Davison I'm not, I'm is not uh, running a play. At this point, I'm not running Davison's a play. Davison's not going to call timeout, I don't think. He's going to let it go. Got to take a knee now. I'm going to take a fumble. I'm going to take. I'm going to take a penalty and take a knee. Oh yeah, right. I'm going to take a penalty and take a knee. Boy, he just must not be comfortable under center. Bettner is going to drive in he, and score. He scored. Instead of taking the knee. And that is the ball game. Cade Metner with another touchdown. This is a terrific little run. I mean, he's. Well, they've been running this play the same whole drive. Play all night. Good block by Good Jacobs. Good block by Jacobs. Well, look where the offensive, the offensive line is in, in the, the end, end zone. zone. Absolutely. You're going to score if your offensive line has pushed this the defense has into the end zone. Some kind of homecoming. For Midland High, absolutely, some kind of homecoming. Because if there's any doubts that uh, the Chemics are back this year, uh, extra points blocked or just missed it, maybe. But I 12 seconds to go. Would have never thought that Midland could score 40 points on Davison tonight. I was hoping for a 21-13 game, yeah. knowing both teams pretty good running back, good defense. But I'm absolutely astounded at how well Midland has progressed from the opening game to this point right here. Each week they've got, and this is what you hope for as a coach, yeah, that each week your team is going to get better and better. And 
those juniors, and this is a junior dominated team except for uh, you know, a good group of senior leaders mm -hmm. who, who, were, who were sick and tired of losing seasons and right. committed themselves to being a better football team. Yeah, this is just fantastic for Midland. Well, after the uh, really excellent wins, Mount Pleasant and basically Central, like you said, all right, Davison undefeated coming in here. You know they're a highly ranked team, and Midland just stuck it to them. No two ways about it. Kickoff is uh, fielded at the 16. Midland stringing it out, another excellent kick return. Swarmed under with three seconds to go. And uh, with that two touchdown lead, This is just a team team win. I mean, Metner, obviously the quarterback, playing a phenomenal game, <coughs> but the uh, the line play on both sides of the ball, phenomenal. Just just tremendous so win. So, what does this tell you if you're a future Midland High opponent? You got to score 40 points. That's the first thing that you know. I would always tell my coaches, how many points do I have to score? Well. I got to score 40 points against Midland because they're going to get 40 points. They scored 39 against the Trippers. If you get 39 against Davidson, you're going to, I mean, they put 55 up against Western, and that was the second game or third game of the year, and they beat uh, Flint. So really, they haven't played team. Last week, they go overtime against Bay City Central, and really, we're taking a look at this tonight, which is a fabulous effort on the part of the Midland Cummings and a terrific coaching job. Now, I'm gonna tell you what I mean by a coaching job. When you get blown out in your opening, yeah. and now you're able to rebound your team, and then you go over to Bay City and win in overtime, and then you take on a team with obvious talents yeah. and, and stuff them, that's a not credit to your coaching staff and to your senior leadership. They don't fold. I think it's just been a terrific homecoming game, and hey, you gotta get, you got to give kudos to Kate Metner for what a job he did tonight. Yeah, I think that's, uh, this is uh, right, here we go with some the highlights. best game of his career thus far. Absolutely. Look at some second half highlights. See here. how nicely he steps up, makes a throw over the middle to Reed. Reed made some great plays tonight, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, how about that one handed uh, catch? And that right there, that that's. Uh, a terrific play by Vaughn there. And again, this is going to be the interception. Gamola's uh, interception. That uh, secondary played a great game. How about Servinsky back there? Servinsky, after the first touchdown, was just fantastic. Field goal. Drilled. Kind of was a broken play that Metner just uh, kept alive. Again, that boy senior leadership and, and made some. What acceleration! I mean, he just accelerated into that. And what a hit there by Gordon. Yeah. On that play right there. That's a stick of the game. And this is this is a this is a real catch, but I still say it hit the ground. I. I he great trapped coverage it right by there. Stravinsky can't do any more than that. No. And look at that. And then he made that effort right Lying. there. You know, he's out on. Servinsky's out on an island out there trying to cover a really good receiver. Yeah. And again, look at the Midland offensive line in the end zone. <laughs> Happy Kemic fan right there. O'Donnell. And here comes the Midland student section pouring on the field, celebrating this uh, tremendous 39-25 homecoming victory and uh, what a great night at community stadium ball game full of action both ways all night long and uh the chemics prevail improved to uh five and one on the year guarantee a winning season four and oh in saginaw valley league play and uh you know head uh, to saginaw next week and then finish up at home against lapeer and then uh, the city title game on October 20th against Dow. Uh, you think that Lapeer game will be big? Oh, oh yeah. uh huh. 
it just the got, Dow I game, think it just got bigger. Yeah, it got huge. And the Dow game will be big. Yeah, that's it's uh, going to be electric here. Next week we're here again for Dow's homecoming yep. against Western. Uh, I figure both teams will qualify for the playoffs and probably have to face each other again Maybe. like 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 it's been in the past. High school football at its best. Bay right City here, Central, folks. and I, we just got to figure out who the fourth team's going to be. And so, uh, again, folks, uh, Midland High prevails on homecoming 39-25. It's Dave Marsh and Frank Altimore bringing you all the action. Thanks to the uh, awesome camera crew, replay crew, and guys down in the in the truck uh, bringing uh, this high quality production and uh, and treating our uh, community to uh, great coverage of athletic events. So, again, our final score: Midland High 39, Davis and Cardinals 25. Victory for the Chemics. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next time.